Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of Nations Royale. I am Toby, joined by Saint, and on behalf of GLL, we're ready to bring you the Latam finals between Brazil and Argentina. As you can see in the bottom, just below, the vetoes are currently taking place. So uh, we're not sure exactly what the map order is going to be. We will know soon enough, though. And um, I got to say, best of seven, there's going to be four games guaranteed. And if today is anything to follow up with what we've been doing so far, it's going to be follow to one of the teams because we've only had shutouts today. Yeah, EMEA saw back to back three zeros. But uh, one thing I'm kind of excited for is the fact that we're going to see all four maps, right? Because it's yeah. a best of seven, it means the first True. four maps are going to be some combination of Wrangel, Miramar, Sanak, and McKendi. Uh, and uh, we've spoken about back in EMEA where uh, those maps like Sanok can be a, a bit of a reset, and, you know, you can use them to come back into a series. So mm. I'm kind of curious where that's going to be in the four, because if that's like map two, map three, then maybe, you know, you can arrest the momentum early on. But if, let's say, Sanok is map four, right, and uh, there's a, if one team wins the first two maps, <laughs> then it becomes so hard to reset. So yeah. I'm, I'm curious how the change from best of five to best of seven is going to change up, uh, first the Vita and second off, how momentum affects this whole game. It's going to be uh, fun to watch. Unfortunately, we're all here to see it. Now, let's take a look at the bracket and see exactly how the teams got to where they have gotten. As you can see, a lot of fights have been taking place. And Brazil and Argentina are your two top finishes. To be fair, are we surprised? Probably not really. Um, both Brazil and Argentina have very, very, very highly talented PUBG players and arguably are the two, I would say, strongest nations in terms of competitive PUBG as a whole in LATAM or in the Latin American um, community and regions. So surprised by the fact that it's those two countries in the finals, not so much. Yeah, I think the bracket sort of played out exactly as we expected, right? you know, Brazil and Argentina winning both, you know, all their games. And I think Brazil, you have to say, were the favorites coming into this. Mm. Uh, at least if you look at the rosters, which I believe we'll do in a, a short while, but uh, Brazil is definitely the the more stacked roster. Uh, but if you look at the teams outside of what we had, I, I think everything sort of played out as we expected. Chile looked really good in the games we watched. Uh, the Chile-Mexico match was uh, the one we watched. And I, I remember, I think it was a 3-0 from them. So uh, I, I don't think there was any real upsets. And we're coming into this, and it might be the first upset on the hand if Argentina can win this. Yeah, I'd be, uh, I'd be surprised to see it, but at the same time, not really. Yeah, I, I don't know. I feel like we've seen so many weird things happen in the Asian mm -hmm. Trail. And actually, from the Latin community was one of the first ones I had the pleasure of covering in terms of um, in terms of Nations Royale. And it was just, I mean, they were all over the place. It was a good combination of Wild Wild West shenanigans and kind of fighting the calm and the like the thin red line through the chaos um so it's like who can who can keep their like who can keep their composure through the chaos the best i feel like will be the team to win yeah in the emea we've seen a lot of teams favor these sort of the, the strategic you know get, get the strong positions and play off them uh, well, I kind of feel like Latam's the other way around, where it's just purely take gunfights. You know, they don't even mm. take gunfights as one group, which we've seen teams in Europe uh, come to successes. You'll see like a 10-man stack take a fight against another one, and it, mm. that sort of defi defines the, uh, the course of the game. So it, it's a little bit less structured and a little bit more centered towards your individual gunplay, which is why I think maybe Latam's not seen any uh, upsets uh, when compared to something like the EMEA region. It's, uh, it's going to be fun for sure. As you can see, we are still waiting. Waiting? That's a new way of waiting. Yeah, we are still waiting for the uh, for the vetoes to come in. It's going to be uh, quite a few hours, I would say, of entertainment. I wouldn't expect the 4-0, but as you were saying, I mean, should it happen, then you'd have to expect it to go in, um, in the favor of Brazil. But... Mm -hmm. Even though, I mean, I don't know, having said that, there are a lot of good PUBG players from Argentina, so I honestly don't quite know. Yeah, I fair. think both countries are, I wouldn't say balanced. Uh, I think they're mm. potentially a different, um, you know, different skills on the team. Uh, I think Argentina's had slightly more success at the highest level, right? I think, I think am I right in saying Silzins, Argentinian? Or Pomi, one of the two. Um, but that, that roster that he was on, I know at least had two Argentinians that uh, performed really well uh, at a high level. And also, if you look at uh, non-squads formats, like Wingman, uh, was I think it was won by Argentina's last time. So I, I think Argentina might have the 
better top players, but then mm. that Brazilian team is slightly more stacked overall. You know, it's a, a bit better balanced across the 32 players on the team. And maybe we'll see a bit of a conflict between that, uh, maybe a slightly more individualistic style on Argentina versus a more uh, team-centric focus on Brazil. Yeah, it's, um, I, I kind of like that we're going to see the, the the strats up against, or the brains up against the bronze and uh, <laughs> potentially at least, potentially that's uh, that's how things could go down. Now, will that be the case? I don't know. I feel like with, you look at a nation and then, I mean, it could be any one nation and you look at them and they go, okay, so in terms of competitive PUBG, like with the players representing this nation, these guys would be, let's say, aggressive. Or then, oh, another way around. And and then when you see in a tournament format like this, sometimes it can be the complete the other way around. Yeah, no, I think that just comes down to your, your approach to the game, right? I mean, Turkey um, in EMEA is a team that I think coming in, just if you if you listed that region, you think maybe they're going to be a team that's going to be focusing on strategy, you know, focusing on rotations and trying to to outmaneuver a team. But actually, they were just taking gunfights and they were mm. doing it so well. So uh, yeah, I think there's a uh, to an extent, you, you can't just rely on the name of the uh, of the country. You know, you can't rely on what country it is and more. Look at how they've played in the past. But if we look at that, I think you know, look back to the fact that Brazil played Argentina and won. Um, I, th I think that's the sign that really coming into this, they're the favourites. Mm. But Argentina's had more practice. The fact that they went down to that lowest bracket meant that they played mm. more games. So maybe they've learned something from those games that they can bring in here and turn it into a really close series. Could be, could be. There's uh, there's always a chance that despite the fact that you don't go flawless through it, the fact that you've had a few more games under the belt and the group has been, I guess, molded together a little better, that can uh, can turn the tide in, in, in a game. I, I, I'm, I would still say that the teams that have gone through without losing games have the upper hand just in just I mean because they haven't been like their 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 strat haven't been proven wrong yet and i feel like in a tournament format like this where teams are not necessarily forced to but try to change up their um their play styles over the course of the tournament because there's so many i mean one thing is if, it's, if you're four players you go okay next game maybe you should do this instead mm -hmm. of that if you're trying to communicate i mean okay so as a whole trying to communicate strategies to 32 players can be practically impossible. Trying to communicate strategy changes <laughs> to that many people, expecting them all to understand what those changes are. That's, I think, almost the like on the verge of being naive. Yeah, and I, I think strategically speaking, you can't go that in depth in Nations Royale at all. Even mm. as you say, just because of the practicality. So you need to focus really at a, a macro level rather than a micro. Right? You need to look at the big picture and think, mm. you know, are we maybe playing a little bit too passive? You know, just overall and and focus on your overall performance and that's how you can change going into games because realistically you do learn the most from losing rather than winning you learn what doesn't work because you know if you're if you're playing and you're only ever winning then you're, you're never learning oh here's the chink in our armor because it's never being punished so yeah. there's an opportunity maybe where uh, th there is that something in the brazilian team that can be punished that hasn't been in, in the past that argentina can step in but this time we finally got the veto down at the bottom, just below yes. us. We've got, got the first five at least, and Salak is going to be map three. Yeah, so um, so that that's where we've seen it before. I don't think, have we? Hmm. I'm not just thinking this season of Nations Royale, but as a whole, have we had the first game of a BO more than three be Sanok. I don't feel like we have. I don't recall Definitely not this ever started on Sanok. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. It's normally the uh, kind of the wild card map that can to some extent, go either way, so it will make sense that it's um, it's the third map pick. Now, I am still, I guess, just gonna, I, mean, I guess we need to get that confirmed at some point, but I am pretty convinced that this is, this is indeed a, um, a best of seven. Mm, yeah. So, the fact that there's only five maps showing is probably just because they haven't had all the maps lined up yet. No, but I'm looking at it now, and uh, uh, we speak about, generally speaking, Sanak and Vikendi are sometimes question marks, right, in terms mm. of. Vikendi is new, so uh, teams don't necessarily know the rotations, don't necessarily know the, the power positions. Sanok is a completely different style to the other three maps. Yeah. So it's uh, it, it's one where you can you can come in, and as long as you just play as one cohesive group, you should do pretty well, because it's all about that big gunfight. So maybe we're going to see a bit of a, you know, one team steps up early on, takes the first two maps, and then the other team then has to take that Sanok Vikendi, I think, for a chance to come back. And we see Sanok map six as well, so there's an opportunity there 
where you, suddenly like if you were good in a regular on Senok, you could win this series in six maps. Yeah. True. Are we gonna go to six maps though, you think? Can I predict a full zero? <laughs> I think I should. You can. <laughs> I'm I gonna mean, go for it. Where we want. Do you, I, I, I mean one thing is one thing is what you I mean would would you expect to see a full zero though? I don't think I think if you look at how Nations Round plays out as a whole, momentum is a big factor. Yes. You know, it, once you start to win maps, you start to feel a bit more confident, then you get more aggressive. And that aggression is so important in this game mode. And so I think I think map two is basically going to define the series. If one team yeah. comes out 2-0, yes, Sanok is their map, we say, is the, the place you can regain, you can arrest the momentum of the other team. But if you come out hot and just smoke the other team first two maps, I, I think... Uh, you you can you know you can very easily turn that into a four zero, so I, I, I'm skeptical to to say it's going to happen because mm -hmm. that that map two is going to be important. But I think it, if any team wins the first two maps, then I, I expect a four zero. Yeah, okay, I, I can I can see that being the um, being the case. Um... To think it will happen. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean <laughs> I, I, I it's just there's I'm trying not to um, what do you say I'm trying to step on anyone's toes because there's such a big amount of talent on mm. this both the sides of the teams but then you got to think i mean yes you can think of individual players from the regions and yes you can say oh but then these guys they have this full four-man team from brazil and they're so good and all these guys are so good they have a full team from uh, argentina and sure but what about the remaining 28 of them right i mean you got you gotta always add to it and i must be honest to admit i don't think i could list like off the top of my head 20 or like 32 argentinian or brazilian players i could probably list you 10 or 15 that i know that i know that are good players but the rest of them i'm not sure about and it's gonna be those it's gonna be the kind of the meat in the in the sandwich that's gonna be the difference maker which i honestly don't know what to expect and I think that's why a lot of times played out a bit differently compared to uh, something like EMEA, where EMEA, you do have those regions like Turkey, uh, I think like mm. Russia, like Ukraine, where the entire team has a pretty high level competitive experience. And yes, last time was a pretty good um, sort of regional scene, you know, especially I think Brazil has a lot of a lot of local tournaments. So yeah. they play against each other. But if you if you talk about international pedigree, yeah, I mean, it's, I think it favors Brazil still and I, th I think brazil still has a, a larger core that you can say is not necessarily tier one but you know up there you know but mm. the the good teams of uh across the globe uh, but there are those players as you said on argentina and because of the fact that there is a big local scene on, on latin i expect both these teams are going to be still pretty decent if not as stacked as we saw in the nba yeah we'll have to uh, wait and see the game should be starting any moment we are just waiting for um, for everything to get going. I can see that the players are filling in on the server, so should be uh, should be good to go at uh, at some point soon. Now, what did you mean? You have you? Hmm, I'm trying to think. Saying, have you covered Latam in Nation Trail before? Yeah, I think we did. Or were you playing last season? We did season two together, right? In uh... yeah, 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 yeah. I just yeah, didn't we... remember if we had Latam yeah. in the mix then or not. That's a good question. I can't remember actually. There was definitely Latin, but I don't know if I did it. I, I, I remember. Probably... I remember Latin yeah. to be one of the regions where, at least when Sanok first came out, and we were playing this on Sanok in like one of the in the very start mm. of it, they had like an agreement that they all had to brawl it out in boot camp, mm. and they didn't yeah. all ended there, and the game was over before we knew it. I, I definitely did the, um, the Brazil versus USA game, so I did the, yeah. I did the finals, but I don't think yeah. I got to watch yeah, yeah. the. Uh, the earlier rounds of Latin, but yeah. Uh, I'm just thinking whether that's going to happen today as well or not. I wouldn't expect so, especially not if it's like a 2-0 <laughs> yeah. or a 1-1. Maybe 1-1 it could happen, but I, I still would be surprised. Well, we had the phase one ending in, um, which match was it? Was it the Turkey-Ukraine match that we saw earlier yeah, today? true, true, true. <laughs> the game finished phase one. Uh, it, it wasn't a, a fist out brawl, but it was a massive brawl in paradise today. Yeah. Ended with one team getting slaughtered. Um, so I, I kind of feel like Sanok might go that way on map three. You know, if one team's 2-0 down, they try and go for a bit of a Hail Mary play early on, you know, take a big mm. gunfight at the start and try and reset. Because I, I feel like if you can win that big gunfight you know, on Sanok, let's say uh, 10 players from Brazil land on uh, Paradise Resort, right? And then maybe 20 Argentinians land on top of them. As long as you can take down that 10, and, you know, if you, even if you lose five or six, 
Man Advantage on Sanak, I think the most important of any map because of how much that big gunfight happens, you know, how likely it is that you just get some big blob versus blob fight uh, compared to the other few maps where, generally speaking, you get a lot more smaller fights going on before the bigger one. It's um, it's rare. I feel I mean, okay. So we can put it this way. I feel like it's more common on Sanok that teams stick to their drops regardless mm -hmm. of whether an opposing team is coming with them or not. Where uh, whereas the way if you go on, let's say Wrangle, if I mean okay, so sometimes you do see fights in cities, but more often than not, I feel like teams back out. Yeah, and I think that's just a testament to how important man advantages are on Sun Up. Right? Yeah. All these teams want to take those 50-50 fights because if you win it, you pretty much just win the game. You, you just start snowballing on Sun Up. On the other maps, uh, man advantages really aren't that strong until phase four, until phase five. So hmm. you can back off and you can you know, try and pick off players in the later phases and use that to get that man advantage that you can then snowball off of. Um, so I, I, th I think teams favor that slow style partly because the map also plays a bit slower you know because we you know we get to a later circle before we have the big gunfight i mean we look at uh, one game we had earlier i think we were going to phase eight i think it was in the uh, the russian series hmm. you compare that to sanok on uh the nation's Real, i think we're averaging something like phase three endings so now i gotta ask you saint mm -hmm. We're doing a full-on Argentina versus Brazil comparison, and you always pride yourself with your uh, with your geographical knowledge, right? Yes. Which of the two countries has more coastline? Argentina. No, no, because of Chile. So it'd be Brazil. Yeah. That's so, correct. Yeah. That's okay. So you got one, right? We got, we, Am we'll, I being we'll, quizzed? We'll do three. That was that was the easy one. <laughs> that was the easy one. That was the easy yeah. one. Okay, so that was the first one. Which country has... Hmm. Okay, so which country has more oh, people school. per capita age 0 to 14? Argentina. Who has the most kids? Argentina. That is correct. Oh, 24%. I'm Definitely wasn't a complete guess. <laughs> <laughs> Two for two. Okay, okay, okay. Fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. Who has the highest population growth rate as of this year? I'd say Brazil, because it's got more cities. So uh, cities tend to have higher birth rates. That is incorrect. Oh. Argentina is 0.89. There we go. So per 1,000 capita, mm -hmm. who has the highest? Death rate. We're not talking about murders. It's just just overall like, old people and everything. When when is this accurate? <laughs> this is estimated by 2018. 2018. I'd go Brazil. That is incorrect. It's Argentina. Mm. Seven point five deaths bad, you know? per one thousand capita. Anyway, here are your rosters. I got a lot more of these questions listed up. Don't worry. If uh, we have to stall again, I got a lot more comparison questions. Maybe we shouldn't talk about too much about death and stuff, but um, it was on the list, so so we threw it in there. Um, as you can see, here are your rosters. A lot of faces that I remember from both the previous Nations Royales, from previous um, Wingman series, and from previous comp tournaments as well, Grand Jill, Grand Slam included. Mm -hmm. And I think you're look, really looking at the the core of Silzin, uh, Rebo, and, uh, and Pome on the, the Argentinian team. That uh, even low kicks to an extent, they're, they're all players that have had a, a not necessarily uh, an amazing performance, but a pretty solid performance, yeah, at mm. an international level, which uh, is something that can't be said for a lot of the players in this lobby. But those four in Argentina, I think, really need to step up tonight because of the way we've seen Latin play out, where it's much more about those gunfights. I think those kind of players need to step up, you know, on the the comparison you've got Brazil, where you've got players like Raspu, who uh, and again is in international level, we've seen do so well. Rusty Zero, mm. and was he, uh, I believe, an ex teammate now of his. But th those kind of players, I think, need to step up tonight. And I think if you have a mixture of the individuals stepping up and also the overall team having an impact on the game, not necessarily getting kills, but as long as they're getting bit damage in, you know, putting pressure on the other roster, I think mm. that's your win condition tonight. Okay, let's see else we're taking to the sky. We are getting this one started. And isn't it just amazing how Brazil is blue and Argentina is red? Cough, cough, observers, cough, cough. 
but Brazil's I'm not thinking, got any red. I'm just, They've both I'm got just, blue, and they. Yeah, well, have, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I would I would have to argue that Argentina would be the more obvious blue logo team. No, I mean you're not wrong, but Thank also you. they do uh, they do have but, blue. They do have blue in, in the blue, defense of the uh, <laughs> in the defense of the so, so, in, yeah. in the defense of X. It's uh, yeah, but seems fair 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 I'll give him that. But yeah, it's, it kind of feels Brazil's a bit trapped almost with the fact that they have this southeast. I mean, mm-hmm. if they get the circle, they, they've won the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. if it goes to Sosnovka, there might be a good chance they can get mm-hmm. their um, their soldiers down there pretty quickly. We'll see in just about five seconds. But, um, Let's take a look. Yeah. Where are we headed? Boink. That's exactly what they did not want. There <laughs> That's is the not one thing a you didn't want to happen. Player in the circle. Yeah, and now the the one I think the big problem really for Brazil was the fact that because we're not in esports mode, there's mm-hmm. a fairly limited amount of cars in that southeast area. You mean? The, the area around Milta and Milta Power tends to have, like between there tends to have quite a lot of cars in it. But realistically, the vast majority of their team are on that road coming sort of north of Milta, mm-hmm. which is almost notorious at this point for just not having car spawns. Let's uh, mow there. I'll track just there. And while, okay, so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to be doing the smoothest segues in the universe over the course of. Um, of these games today because these guys have pretty far distance to go and should yeah. they as you say not be able to find a vehicle right they need to uh, they need to make a pretty good dash and they need to make a pretty good run forward so that leads me to my next question which of the two countries has the highest obesity rate a bit who is hmm. better argentina or brazil i'm trying to think of cuisine brazil isn't brazil really well known for their uh, their meat I mean, I like their, their steaks. I don't know. So I'm going to go with Brazil because the Brazilian barbecue is amazing. They have better food, so I expect the answer is Argentina. Yeah. But Brazil, is, yeah. Brazil is better. I, I mean, if I was living in Brazil or Argentina, I'd eat, I think I'd eat more food if I was in Brazil because the Brazilian barbecue is amazing. But uh, that's, not the, that's not the case. The stats are wrong. The stats are wrong. <laughs> I can never be wrong. <laughs> you got a wrong one about time. You didn't get them all right. Okay, so let's uh, we're now we're now we're going to a, a, a one that I know is very touchy touchy feely feely for um, for for a lot of people from the Latin region. So I'm gonna tread the waters carefully, but it's we are only like guys. Everything here is based on stats. And Who's bet. got a better flag, statistically speaking? Who's <laughs> <laughs> which co- country is cooler? Now, which <laughs> of the two teams, when going up against one another, has won more football games? Ooh, that's a good question. You can't, no, you can't, you're not allowed to go check it. I'm not, my hands are crossed. Uh, you can see Wait. them on Discord. My hands are in the air. I, I yeah, fair sorry. enough, fair <laughs> enough. Who has most wins <laughs> in football of the two? Versus, sp- specifically versus one other. another. I think Argentina. Yeah. The answer is, drum roll, Brazil. No. Oh. I'm not good at this. I'm not. Okay, so that's that's if we compare. I mean, the, the, it's Brazil either way, but it's most wins in like for this is just with everything. Like Brazil the most tournaments and U oh, right. seventeen <laughs> stuff, but but in total, like also for for just their World Cup teams or like uh, national teams, it's still it's still Brazil. I mean, it just makes sense. Here. Brazil's won more World Cups against no, but it's against one another. Yeah. So who has won more? main championships no that'd be brazil because right? they have the most world cups oh they, they yeah most one places. one more yeah because copa america yeah argentina has it, one yeah. more of but how many how many world cups argentina got two or is it one uh yes and brazil has won five yeah i know he something could, he, he could look a little bit that kid is not brazilian not not even <laughs> This is where all the Brazilian players die to the blue circle. Yeah, because there's... I mean, we know that road <laughs> is... of them are getting cars yet. <laughs> they had one. I saw one in Milton. They had, they a had one car. So guaranteed huh. four people will survive this circle. Interesting. From Milton. But, I mean, realistically, with this circle, Argentinos are going to just set up, right? <laughs> They're going to have so much control of the middle of the map, uh, which is going to be uh, nice, I think is the way to put it. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, do you want that? Does Brazil care? Not 100%. Uh, <laughs> Denied. <laughs> There's no room. Oh, 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 Necro can't get in it. Oh, there's someone more coming. You and Kush got a US. Great. And there's a buggy down there as well. That should be fine. 
They'll be fine. I think Rubinho is going to miss out here, which is, uh, that's tough. But uh, yeah, I mean, come back to the circle. <laughs> if Argentina could just set up in all the good places, mm. um, it's going to be a little bit rough because this circle, I think, we, we saw this literally this exact circle. Yeah. And I mean, to the about three meters. I think it was in, was it in EMEA? I think it was in EMEA last week and it ended on the, the edge of Everest. And we saw the, the importance of high ground, specifically in this circle, where the, the areas around um, the radio tower and Everest, mm-hmm. if you can control both of them, you can pretty much just get five or six man advantage for free because people drive in, you just start lighting them up. Even if it's with DMRs, once you have 10 people on the hill, you know, there's not that much they can do. So, but it, I, I'm kind of curious why Argentina is set up on this sort of southeastern side where they've they've done literally the opposite of what we normally expect and gone for the low ground. <laughs> They're literally sitting in the trenches in uh, chopsticks, which uh, I'm not sure I like. No, I mean, that that's a strategy. I'm not sure it's a particularly good one. I guess. No, I mean, uh, no, but it's still a strategy. I want to see them move up um, northwest. I mean, there were many places they could play that could grant them some more control. Just, you know, they could just get the circle. Yeah. (laughs) They could just stay. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. I expect now they're going to fill up Gakko and use that as a a fort. But um, one thing in this circle I think is really important is protecting your vehicles, right? Mm. Because, I mean, it's just one massive field, basically. This whole circle is a field. So uh, if you're able to keep those vehicles and able to move between the compounds late game, um, so that you you know you can move with the zones, you're in a really strong spot. And the team that does lose the most vehicles, I think, in these circles will really be the team that struggles to uh, to win the match. So I want to see Argentina protect those cars because they were parking on the outside of Gakka and just leaving them there. Yeah. And that leads me to the next question: Which of the two countries has more vehicles per one thousand capita? Per one thousand. Ooh, ooh, oh, people are dying to the blue. <laughs> Ouch. Um, see you later, Kilimo. But oh, this is the glider too. That's unfortunate. <laughs> the snakes are made. They found the glider, and it's because you can't. Uh, I don't think you can heal, right? Because you can't switch seats. So the the guy in the ah uh, yeah, they can't swap seats. That's mm. unfortunate. No, oh, um, well. Brazil. In peace. Brazil. That is incorrect. Oh, I'm awful at these. Yeah. Three hundred eighteen cars per one thousand people in Argentina. And 210 cars per 1,000 people. Argen- Argentina's a bit more rural, a bit more spread out population. So it does yeah. kind of make sense. Because, I mean, if you're living in the uh, you know the massive Brazilian cities, you don't be leaving them much. But, mm. Fair enough. This is a nice Which crate. country <laughs> oh, has the highest life expectancy? Argentina. Yes. By less than a half year. <laughs> Massive difference. 76 and a half years versus 75.8 years. Hmm. What is it? Oh. Oh, wow. That's an Argentinian circle. Yeah. And I want to see them set up around the radio tower now. You know, where Rebo is. If they can get a big group there, you basically that whole field, you know, if you go from basically hospital all the hmm. way down to that road in the middle of the map, is just yours. <laughs> There's nowhere they can play if you have control of the tower. So uh, I want to see a, a big group of Argentinians set up there and just lock down the center of this map now. <laughs> you're sure you're sky cam yeah. flying over the battlefield, just making sure everyone's... Um, it's the UAV. Everyone, yeah, exactly. Beep, 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 beep. Just, that's, okay, I guess UAVs are more singing now as well. That's just something yeah. they do. Rayo, more like radio. <laughs> no? Okay. I, I hate the fact that you've actually tried. <laughs> Uh, th- that was difficult for you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. I think this is where it's going to start to get spicy here because uh, Brazil now are at a big disadvantage in this circle. I mean, they can move in and you know they can get in the circle for now, um, but it, it it's one of those games where if you just get in the circle and take whatever you can and it's bad, then you're you're sort of delaying the inevitable. Right? If you're in a position like this where you're Brazil, I want to see them crash the tower. Just, mm. You know, stick like twenty players on that hill and just take out whatever Argentinians are there, and then. You know, flip, get a bit of a reversal of fortune where suddenly you're in the, the power position with more players alive. Uh, but it, and, it kind of feels like they're not going to do that. And should you need a place to go to stay in a circle like this, I wonder which of the two countries <laughs> has the higher rate for hotel stays hmm. per night for one Brazil. person? Brazil. 
That is correct. It's so more expensive to, to stay at a hotel in Brazil. I was saying is that it's probably a, it's a slightly bigger tourism industry. So it, it makes in sense what country of the two does a bottle of water cost more? Based off absolutely no <laughs> knowledge, which means I'm an expert. So. <laughs> Isn't that how experts work? And that's incorrect. It's Argentina. No. Circle goes in the favor of Argentina once more. Once again, the tower. The tower is very strong in this. Yeah, now it's like, um, <laughs> the center of attention right now. Yeah. But I, I feel like Brazil needs to crash it. Like that's their wing condition now. Just send like 20 mm. players. Because realistically, in this circle, that's the only good position. Everything else is only good if you have the tower. <laughs> so right now, Brazil's sort of. Locked out. None of them can really get in. Yeah, there were a couple of ridges on the north, but you don't want to be stuck in a crappy position for a couple of circles and then just slowly get picked off. Go for the crash. This, I mean, there's 20 players on this north. There's only 10 on that hill. S stick your entire team on it, take it off them, and you win the game. Simple as that, man. Right, it's worth it going. Go on. You know you want to. <laughs> <laughs> just attempt them. You need to wave like a dangle a bit of uh, Brazilian barbecue in front of them. Yeah, up that's an hill. option. That's oh, it's happening. Option. It's happening. Yes. There they go. The so Brazilians are crashing. We're on the way. They need to play the Valkyrie <laughs> theme. Da, 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 while they're sending their USs forward. Yeah, now Argentina needs to recrash this because this position is so important. Just send more players up there. I want to see a big 26 v 26 fight on the hill because realistically, whoever wins this fight wins the game for me. Yeah, you'd have to think so. And you can see they're all coming up now as well. All the Argentina players are making a dash for the hilltop. The antenna is going to be where it's all going to go down. It's just absolute chaos. There's bullets, there's the grenades, there's flashbangs flying everywhere. It's, uh, currently, it seems like Argentina is slightly in the ascendancy, but Brazil now is starting to get a lot of knocks. You see there, there's four people knocked for Argentina. So. What happens when you go mining in FPS? Because I feel like that's where they are right now. <laughs> yeah, especially with all these smokes. Like, the computer is consuming FPS <laughs> instead of providing. It just starts going back in time. I look how many players are knocked. <laughs> It looks like uh, you know 20 versus 19 looks pretty close, but then you count in for all the knocks and the fact that Argentina is not in a position to res really any of these players. Realistically, this is like a five six man advantage. So I, I love this from Brazil that they went for that big crash. You know, hmm. the, the one thing I wanted them to see do, and they did exactly that. And now really they are in the ascendancy. They're in uh, you know literally in the ascendancy because they're on the high ground and also figuratively because they've got the six maybe even seven man advantage. You can see. And speaking of military airplanes, which of the two <laughs> countries has more? Brazil. It's bigger. Yes. Yeah. I bet that was like creepy yeah. in terms of the fact that the country has like a billion <laughs> more citizens too. Yeah. So <laughs> that was a nice little segue there, Toby. Keep doing those. We like them. I've oh, seen yeah. worse. Cool. I've seen yeah. worse. Yeah, that's yeah. better. That's better. I mean, realistically, no, this game's over, right? <laughs> yeah, you'd have to think so. I mean, okay, That's so this is again a case of Brazil. I mean, or I should say Argentina being gifted everything. Mm -hmm. And Brazil coming and saying, no, you don't, and taking it away from him. But I think that's, you know, I said I wanted to see them group up. I wanted to see them just hit that hill with all they had. That's exactly what they did. The, the only response Argentina could have had is just gone back, you know, sent everyone else onto the hill as well. Mm. And literally just take, you know, take an honest 26 to 26 gun fight. I mean, to be fair, they did try to do it. They were just a little slow. Yeah, but it was more that they didn't all try to do it, I think was the problem. There was a lot of players, a lot of stragglers on this mm. decent side for Argentina. They just didn't really do anything. You know, everyone else was crashing and they just sat here. Yeah. I mean, yes, they you can have an impact, but there's one sort of caveat to trying to play long range on this and the fact that uh, you only see above eight players' heads that they're on your team, right? So you have to look at the map to, to know that people are on your team. Mm. So when you're at range, you really run a severe risk of accidentally shooting your teammates as they're running around the hill. So it's very hard for uh, people like th this group here on the southeast to, to provide any sort of overwatch to their teammates on the hill because they just run the risk of killing friends instead. And realistically, the fact that Brazil worked so much better as a team to take that hilltop is why they won that bomb. Yep, there you go. Which team has more wins to in Brazil. today's games of Nations Royale? Same <laughs> That's, that's a tricky one. Uh, Brazil? I know, right? Yay! You're correct. <laughs> they are up 1-0 after, uh, after a cluster of a uh, of a top fight there. But, I mean, and that that's where sometimes that's what I'm trying to advocate when saying it's not always the best to have circles because mm. sometimes 
and especially especially in in nations royale it's when you have your back up against the wall and you're forced to do something like when there's only one play for you to make that's when you can kind of go out and get wins whereas to when you have the center of the circle you can play 15 different positions you don't know exactly what the opponent's gonna do that's where you you tend to spread too thin but because these guys had like we need to push that antenna or we will lose the game then they all committed to it. It was one unanimous decision and it granted them the win in the end. So we'll discuss more on that as we get over to game number two in just a moment. We will be headed over to Miramar. But before that, that's going to be a short break, guys. So stick around and I'll see you guys again real soon. Brazil takes game and number one in probably what should have been a uh, Argentinian map there. Brazil was uh, fleeing the blue. They were trying to get gliders, which didn't work out because they ended up crashing because of the blue. They were constantly shifted away from it. Despite all of that, they still somehow managed to take home the win. Saying, what's your thought on that one? It kind of felt like Argentina didn't realize that that crash was going to come in. I mean, they, mm. they had, I think, maybe eight or ten players on the... Uh, on the radar tower hill and they were just so slow to react to the fact that that was Brazil's only play. Uh, I think you could see it from a mile off that it was going to come in. I mean, I, I, yes, we have the full picture, but I, so, you know, even I could see it, <laughs> even I could see that it was going to happen. It was the only thing they could do. And realistically, if they could stack that hilltop as the crash comes in, even if it's 20 versus 28, you know, there's still a big opportunity to win that. So I mm. think maybe a bit of lethargy, you know, a bit, Bit of uh, not quite recognizing where that fight's going to happen was uh, the reason why they lost that match. Yeah, that uh, that's, that sounds very very correct. And uh, I don't know. I mean, now we're taking it over to Miramar. Is, is there anything? And I know we're only one game in and all, but is there anything that you saw off of the first game that makes you think that maybe either Brazil or Argentina, for that sake, would have a uh, have the upper hand coming into um, coming into Miramar? Well, I think we saw Brazil take high ground. Um, Argentina's sort of strategy was to to take what they considered where the circle was going to go. You know, they stayed on the low ground on the southeastern side because they expected the circle might come there. Whereas Brazil just favoured that Everest position. You know, they, they went up mm. there and they had to look around and uh, just used that to dictate their strategy. And I think that's, in general, a much better way to approach the bigger maps. And if you look at Miramar with how many hills, how many mountains we have on that map, I think that same strategy will come in and really help Brazilian game too. Uh, so I think coming into this one, once again, they have to be the favorites. That's, um, I think that's probably what most people would, would, would tend to agree on too. I mean, I don't know. I mean, while I, I while I still, I guess, see Brazil as the, uh, the better team in terms of this, um, Nations Royale tournament format. Uh, I really thought last game had Argentina written all over it until that crash came in. And I completely agree with you in saying that they should have seen that happening. Yeah. I mean, yeah they should have known, right? I feel like it was very obvious that that crash was going to come in. Mm. And there was just no reaction. You know, we, even when they physically saw it happening, I think maybe five or ten players reacted to that to come in and, and try and help out the rest of the team. So mm. I want to see Argentina work as a group. Yes, they can position themselves in the circle if they get it. But if that crash happens, you know, you can you can really identify where the crash is going to come. It's not yeah. that hard to do, I think, in a lot of situations. And if you can identify that, you need to preempt it and you need to start stacking that position so that it's hard to take over. This is probably the most evenly split I've ever seen anyone, or at least within this season of Nations Royale, in a um, in the start of a game. There always, yeah. There's always some sort of kind of interfering with one another but this time around it's really really evenly split out so i guess kudos to um everyone for for for, for sharing and it really reminds me of exactly how the <laughs> 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 what a circle for brazil uh the entire brazilian roster is in phase one <laughs> none of the argentinian <laughs> players are in <laughs> the entire team is inside the circle as zones oh, go okay Okay, okay. I see what you're doing there, Gabe. 
I think the game's decided. Brazil's winning this best of seven. Um, but anyway, I mean, what I was going to say is that it, this reminds me very similarly of how Brazil set up in the previous game where they mm-hmm. went to one corner of the map and just took it over. Yeah. And they didn't get the shift that time, you know, when the, literally the opposite side of the map. This time yeah. they go up in the northeastern corner and bam, they get the circle perfectly. Uh, we saw this circle before. Uh, it was Hungary. No, it was Poland versus someone, I think, or Greece versus someone. So is this the case now where, because we talked about it, right? Some teams just, it's, I mean, again, everything I'm talking about here is not in terms of competitive PUBG as a whole. It's very much specifically about mm-hmm. um, about this tournament format. So is this maybe where we see a Argentinian team go out and win because they have their backs against the wall? Could that be? I think it really depends if they can work as a team. Right? We, game one, we really just did not see that teamwork that uh, we've come to expect from the bigger teams in this tournament. Mm. Uh, maybe the... I, I think if we go back to the previous games, both these teams have played in a the tournament. They've generally been against teams they've been massive favourites against. So you, mm. can aff- you can afford to play in smaller groups because generally speaking, you're going to win those fights. But now you just need to blob. You, know, you need to take those gunfights where you are at a significant advantage. And if Argentina can't do that, I just don't see a way for them to break through the uh, Brazilian line. And uh, we've seen this circle before where a team is set up around Azahar on the hilltops. Uh, and those positions tend to be really strong because the d- circle does tend to come somewhere towards the south, towards mm. that, the sort of the Azahar road that goes east to west. So if Brazil can properly set up in that position, I'm uh, a little bit nervous for Argentina's future. But there is precedent for a win for the team coming into that because the last time we saw this circle, the team that got the circle that set up on these hilltops actually lost the game. Yeah. So where does Argentina push to now? Will they just send it straight here? Or, or is there is there another path you would think? Um, I think it depends. It, play? it depends what the question is. Is, is. is the question, this is what they should do, or this is what they will do? Because I think what well, they it will be a combination do of both. is take the western side. But I want to see them go towards that Azahar area, uh, particularly the hill northwest of Azahar that we were looking at um, mm. just now. That little position is really strong, partly because of the information it gives you, partly because of the synergy with the compound down the hill. It uh, becomes a really strong defensible position. So I want to see them take that. But I expect we'll see them uh, sort of get onto the western side of the map and, and be a little bit more tentative as they try to work out where the Brazilians are set up. Sounds reasonable. They are all making their way up kind of, uh, I guess you can say, over over power grid but they also do have a few players down south of hacienda and i feel like if they realize or when they realize because they should do real soon that there are no opponents there you can see them here when they're realizing there's no one around that should be a message to everyone west of them saying Mm -hmm. guys there's no reason to wrap that far west yeah there's no one here we might as well just move in where we are instead of trying to uh like over rotate yeah, this little group here is really important for, for Argentina's strategy. If they can find a safe spot that's fairly deep in the circle, as uh, that looks struggling. <laughs> but if they, if they can get pretty deep into the circle, sort of around where Gantaran is, then that you know that whole Argentina roster can push in because Brazil is really not setting up right now. It's it kind of feels like they're maybe unsure of where Argentina is coming from because they're setting up on these roads on the northwest and the southeast, hmm. sort of unaware of the fact that Argentina is just flooding through the uh, the southwest. Well, 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 they are slowly and steadily making their way up, and well, it's a bit better when you look at things from the Brazilians' perspective. They're splitting all over the place. They're still like mm. in the. They, I think they're they're as surprised as we were to see that circle, and and now they're just maybe overlooting. Is that a thing? I think it's definitely a thing right here. There's there's an opportunity really where Argentina can flip the circle on the head of Brazil, where because they're uh, sort of being so much more proactive in getting towards the circle and getting you know, grouped up, they can start to move into the power positions before Brazil. Because realistically, if they run into a group of three or four, that group has to run or get killed. Hmm. So yeah, I, th- I think now I want to see them be a little bit more aggressive. Uh, you know, I said they're probably going to set up on the West and be a little bit tentative, you know, work their way in slowly. But if they spot a position in the middle of the map that looks good, that looks empty, they just need to hit it. You know, they just need to go. And if they don't do that, then they the, the fact that Brazil's not grouped up isn't going to be an issue. Well, they're making their way up, and it's just uh, one or two players really 
But here you can see some of the Brazilian players are pushing out a Crucial Valle now to try and um, try and maybe assist. But I mean, mm -hmm. either you either you put up a front line or you let them through. Let's see now where the next circle is going. Because if this one's going further east, then well, Ooh. yeah, further north at least. Give them the valley where TP Lentz or T Plants is right now. Give them that valley and then play the high ground around it and kind of force them into um, the lowlands. Yeah, those hills around Coitaval, I think, are going to be an important position now because that high ground really cuts off the whole south side of the circle, mm. uh, which you can light up. You know, you can pretty much shoot any anyone that goes anywhere in that area of the map. So I think Argentina might sort of be forced to go up into the city along this road or to try and crash one of the hills and just take it on its gunfight and, and sort of hope for the best. Uh, but it's definitely doable. I mean, they have that two-man advantage because there's only 30 Brazilian players joining the server. So maybe... Mm -hmm. Just maybe they can get control of one of the hills and play off that. So you say there's a chance. And indeed there is. They're all outside the circle right now, but they have a chance to make their way in. They are maneuvering west around. I should say it's um, not exactly the dumbest idea in this situation, given that they... Uh, I feel like they know and they should know, approximately mm -hmm. at least, where the... Um, what do you say, where the um, Brazilian team is positioned? And they're kind of trying to wrap around it now, but in before this next circle shifts south again. Yeah, it, is, uh, it so kind of feels like... <laughs> <laughs> that's bold. He was prone. I mean, credit where credit is due. Uh, I kind of want to see the, the Argentinians keep wrapping and maybe come all the way around to Tierra Bronca. Hmm. The, uh, particularly the hilltop there is uh, not necessarily a counter to the Cordoval hilltops. But it's a strong, strong enough position in this circle that you can use to move around. It's actually hitting his shots. I don't think he's gonna not. It's su it's surprisingly precise that gun. When you're there's always prone. that risk when you're prone. If someone headshots you like that, yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden you uh, you go from being a lot of HP to none. And yeah, so we see the whole the Argentina Ross is wrapping around the north, but uh, Coitaval Hill is the position to be right now, and Brazil has full control. Yeah, where do you go here if you're Argentina? I mean, you Take have to wrap. You have to just push into it. Through mm -hmm. that. You can't go into the city. That's when you get pinned in. You need to somehow manage to wrap around. Maybe just continue your kind of miracle round all the way towards the east and try and make your way up from there. Maybe. I uh, can't really tell if that's the play, though, or if uh, that's going to leave them vulnerable. Because you My can't go into the Bronco either. Yeah, map one, we saw Brazil recognize that the radar tower was so important to winning the game, and they just crashed it. And now you have to recognize that the Coito Val Hills, where Kill Demo is and, uh, and his teammates here, this area is where Argentina needs to get control. So they need to start flooding that hill before Brazil can get the whole roster there and before yeah. they get trapped in this city. And right now, it doesn't seem like they're committing too much to it. They are sending some up the hill, but they need to send more. They need to get even further up Rasti and Capitan needs to um or they need to start well yeah i should say i mean pushing forward you need to you need to have an uh, and that's what i feel like the mentality has to be especially in this type of tournament on this type of place or what do you say game mode you cannot always be the one that has to make the hero play mm -hmm. if everybody wants to get the 15 kills in the smart flanks then you will lose you need your like your your meat shield every now and again and yes maybe the first four people will go down trying to push up that hill but it could win you the game. Yeah, and I mean, we go back to, to map one. Brazil recognized that crash had to come in, and they crashed it before they were forced to. You know, they, they could have just mm. hung around on the north side, maybe lost a couple of players and survived. But instead, they took that gunfire. Now Argentina's finally doing it. But the whole Brazilian team's already here and just lighting them up, and suddenly they're just getting ripped apart. A couple knocks coming in, but this group here, I mean, it's so hard to get up there because the whole Brazilian roster is set up. It is not looking good at all. I think no, they just still decent, but it's um <laughs> out. Oh, oh, I feel like those numbers are gonna just go one side at some point soon yeah. enough. Yeah, they needed to make that, that exact push that they did about a minute earlier. Because yeah. there was only I think maybe five or ten players on the hill that could have stopped them and they could have flooded up there and taken control. But now pretty much the entire Brazilian team uh, is up on that hill. So trying to push up is just a death trap. I mean, the, the only alternative now is to try and swing around the southern side and maybe come in on the, on the southern ridges. But, I mean, controlling this hilltop basically shuts down the whole area of the map. 
again, it's one of those situations where you kind of allowed for Brazil to to to, to get the better position in this. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they had the chance, as you said, to make the play up the hill. But at the same time, I feel like the last play they should try to make is push down into the city. Because that's, yeah. that, that's just going to be delaying your doom. Because you know you're going to get pinned inside. Just either... Like, you have to try and take the fight in the open and meet them in the open. Yeah. Uh, they could have crashed the northern side of the hill and sort of pushed, you know, and swept over it. Um, it's, it's not as easy to crash from the north as it is from the south, but it's still do definitely doable, especially if you have mm. a big man advantage. But it kind of feels like Argentina is almost scared to take that gunfight. And realistically, in this game mode, you have to take a big gunfight at some point in the game. You have to take the... You know the twenty versus twenty, or the twenty-five v twenty-five, uh, and it's it's just about winning that, and that that's what defines the the games. But it, it feels like Argentina doesn't want to take those fights, and instead wants to prolong the game, uh, which I think, as we've seen, especially on long EMEA, the teams that prolong the game versus take those uh, those proactive gunfights are the teams that lose. Yeah. You, um, like it, it's just one of those. I mean, sometimes you gotta bite the sour apple. You don't mm -hmm. always get to take the fight where you want to take the fight. And if the fight starts somewhere and you start losing players, and you know for a fact you're gonna have like six, seven people caught in a situation they can't get out of without any help, you have to say, you know what? I know we have this strategy to go do all these super smart things, but now this happened, we gotta react to it, and we gotta go right now. And yeah, I feel like boys start Brazil, yeah, exactly. In Brazil, I mean, uh, I should say Argentina ain't doing that. They're trying to split even thinner now, already being down nine players, and they're still playing edge. I don't, I don't think it's going to work out. I mean, they need to land some pretty damn good shots in order to do it. And as you can see in the kill field right now, it's still going a lot in favor of Brazil. Yeah, and it, it still kind of feels like Argentina are in that solo mindset where they want the individual plays, uh, which you said really just don't work out. When you're against a team of a similar caliber, mm. you, know, you, you have to rely on the whole roster. You can't rely on one or two players. And we see like Pome is trying to make a hero play here, but in a 1v, was that 1v3, 1v4, yes, he might get a kill, but realistically, you're expecting him to get traded sometime soon. Like the fact that he's pushing up though, he needs the help from his teammates and they are coming. So it ain't over yet. I mean, they are down mm -hmm. by a nine player deficit, but it's not over. Circle is going up the hill. It should be playable for everyone, to be fair. I mean, the guys that are down towards the south on the um, Argentinian side should be able to push up. Uh, again, they need to utilize this, they need to get a foot in while the majority of the Brazilian players are still up on that hill. Yeah, they can get into the southern side of the circle here, but it, once you come over this ridge where Ganchan is, you see this big valley right, that the compound has a lot of control of. And realistically, if Brazil can lock Argentina uh, sort of in that area or not even let them get there in the first place, then uh, realistically they should win this. But there's an opportunity here for Argentina. If they can win this country on the hill, if they can get to that compound before Brazil's set up, maybe there's a chance. Uh, but that kill feed... Uh, there's a, a lot of kills going untraded right now in favor of Brazil, and that's where you see that man advantage just be so strong. Uh, the fact that they're already 10 up means that they can take 2v1 gunfights all the time and, and really just exploit that man advantage and start to snowball. Let's see. Numbers are crumbling for Argentina. There's all green and, I guess, yellow and blue and white in the kill feed. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's uh, it's the downfall of Argentina, as this one, I would assume, is going to be coming to an end. Yeah, and I mean, it says 26 to 10, but realistically, it's something like 26 to 5, as there's a lot mm. of knock players in Argentina right now, and there's even pan kills coming in. Beautiful. Uh, Brazil really trying to show who's boss here, and we said Math 2 is going to be the one that defines the series. Is, is that going to be the case in the best of 7 2? I do. I, I think so. I think the momentum now for Brazil. Yes, you're coming into Sanok, which is a big question mark in terms of the way it plays. Mm -hmm. But I, I think coming off the back of two pretty dominant performances by Brazil, you've got to be really confident coming into those games. And that's pretty much what Sanok is, right? You have to be yeah. confident and take that big gunfight. And if you look at these two teams, Brazil taking the big gunfight both games, Argentina's trying to run away both games. Yeah, it's... Um... Muscle oftentimes beat um, the 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 idea of being super strategic about it, and I could see what Argentina was trying to do in terms of first they wanted to wrap around, then sure the circle goes back towards the south, but you you gotta have a strategy for that too. If your strategy was oh let's just go into the city and try and shoot them and then have to push up the hill on foot, th then you might as well just forfeit the game because that's a really bad plan. 
if there's strat wells let's try and continue further around and maybe get a foothold on the hill and as you were saying we know we can catch them rotating mm -hmm. right now if we can just commit to the decision fast enough brazil will need time to kind of establish their forces and they never took advantage of that you know it's really the importance of uh being proactive right i mean it, mm. it kind of feels like it was always argentina reacting to whatever power position brazil had and trying to get away from it rather than take it off them you know brazil game one they, re they recognized the power position argentina had in that radar tower mm. and they just went yoink and took it off them and that was what won them the game this game brazil had the power position up on that hilltop and instead of argentina crashing it trying to take it off them they try to rotate around and in doing so they lost so many players in that city yep. that even though they got around the southern side uh, there was already a, something like a 10-man disadvantage it was a uh, tough one for sure. Brazil proved to us so far that they can win games where they don't get any circles at all. And now they can also win games where they do get circles. Let's see how things will pair as we go over to Sanok in just a short moment. Before that, guys, there's going to be a little break. So stick around. We'll see if Brazil can bring it to 3-0 in just a moment. Brazil has taken the lead, and not just any lead, a 2-0 lead in the LATAM Finals here. I'm Toby, joined by Saint, and we have got more Nations Royale matches coming your way in just a short moment. Now, Saint, we're headed on over to Sanok to what is going to be the following of what I would expect to be, and I don't have the stats on this, but the fastest Sanok ending we've seen in Nations Royale to date earlier today it was something like six minutes three seconds we saw yeah um in that third map of the best of five but i doubt we'll see it this time because it's not the final map you know because what happened there was one team was two nil down in the best of five and they went for hail mary they didn't work right it, it, this True. time i kind of feel like both teams will still play quote unquote normally you know they'll, they'll mm -hmm. go and take their time uh, in the middle of the map you know they'll, you know they'll move into the circle and then wait until maybe phase three phase four to take that fight uh, but I think this is the turning point that Argentina needs. They have to win this, and they need more players having an impact. Because right now, only 10 players on their team have kills. I want to see, after this game, I want to see that number above 20. Otherwise, I just realistically don't see them winning a map. Exactly. Impressive as well for, um, for Brazil to have so many players be able to get killed. Mm -hmm. It's, um, again, I think it's uh, not underestimated. What's the right word for it? I think it's... Um, just you'd be surprised by how hard it is to get kills in this game mode. Yeah. As we were discussing earlier when we were covering the EU broadcast, like if you can get four kills in a game, you're having a really good game as an individual. Because think about it this way. Every time you're peeking anything, odds are there's like seven or eight people trying to peek you as well. Mm -hmm. So it's extremely difficult to get eyes on anything in this. But we are headed on over to uh, Sanok, as you can see. It's um, it's going to be an interesting one, I'm sure of it. It's going to be tricky to um, to start off with, and it does seem like there's a little bit of boot camp action coming your way. And we're going to have a, a boot camp battle between it looks like a, a, a Brazilian minority versus a oh, actually no, I say that it looks pretty That's equal. So players. I think this really is going to define the game. If Argentina can win this, you know, can come out of this with a four or five man advantage, then there's a, a big opportunity for them to uh, to win the series. But right now, the Argentinians are stepping up. Got two kills already, only for one trade. Yeah, Repo finds one. Pepe is by himself. That's where the majority of the Brazilian players are up to land. So that's, of course, unfortunate. It does manage to find one. Goes down and return, though. So it gets traded off immediately. Unfortunate, but... Uh... That's your teammate. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that's, that's that's also kind of unfortunate. That's not, not 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 the strategy you want to try and implement if you were trying to win games here. Yeah. yeah, especially when you got two uh, Argentinians next to you. But we see Argentina has control of the lobster, and Brazil have the uh, the outer compounds. Oh, are they going to see this? There's a perfect opportunity for three man spray. Marco gets all three. Wow. Go down. Oh no, that's not good for Brazil. <laughs> Suddenly, it's a team advantage. Good at all. 
Uh, this is exactly what Argentina needed to start this game off. They need to turn this now into something like 5 or 6. If they could turn mm. it into a 5 or 6, they're in such a driving seat, especially with the circle going east. The rest of the Brazilian roster is out on their Western Island. There's an opportunity here for Argentina to turn it around on Senna. This would be impressive. I mean, even if they only get this one map in now, or even if I was going to say, even if they, mm. they only get this one fight in now, it's you just you just get so much more control by being able to what do you say like by by having the numbers it feels like you also get a chance to kind of you get the saying in where the fight will take place you know what i mean like if you have seven more players than your opponents you can kind of uh, dictate the, the course of the playing field a little better now we're having a bit of a resurgence from Brazil here as the uh, the reinforcements are pulling up on the east, but the Western group is being shut down now. Brazil's starting to pull it back in their favor, but Argentina seems to be wanting to overwhelm Bucan. We see it on the northeastern edge, and a lot of people are pulled in. So it's going to be... Uh, I think it's still a pretty close one. Yeah, there are a couple of knocks here or there. But uh, suddenly, it was, what, three or four in favor of Argentina? It's just swung completely the other way. And if this group of Argentinian players can't hold on until the reinforcements properly get here, uh, there's an opportunity maybe for Brazil to reverse the uh, the man advantage. Let's see. Oh, hit your shots. Come on. That's <laughs> another part of uh, winning. You need yeah, to be able to actually hit people. That does. At least it does help a lot, I've heard. I oh, no. Hit shots, so I don't oh, know. no. I don't know. That's unfortunate. One Good does time. fall, and what <laughs> what was it? I mean, obviously far from a far from a big lead, but a something that could have spun things in the favor of um, of Argentina is now somehow yet again become a um, advantage for Brazil. But there we go. Now the the Zerg swarms come in. They're starting to shoot each other a little bit, but you see that kill feed is all Argentinian. Is uh, pretty much the entire Argentinian roster pulled in, right? And then they just went. Mm. Overwhelmed. They, they were skeptical about taking gunfights in map one and map two, but finally they've grouped up. Finally, they took that big gunfight and they've come out of it with the advantage. That's exactly what they had to do. They've won over, it seems, full control of uh, boot camp. Now, is that the key to victory? Not necessarily, but potentially. As um, as we are, we are, we are making our way, we're making our way further down. I mean, is there a chance that this one ends in one minute and 15 seconds? I would say no, <laughs> but but I think if you're Brazil now, and you, of course, I mean they probably want to finish it off as fast as they can. You got to regroup. You're only down by three players. Regroup, go together, and uh, and figure out how you win this. And but I don't I think, think crossing where they are right now is the smartest play. To be fair, it kind of feels like that Brazil just want to uh, go for the revenge frag. You know, go for the uh, the big gunfight again. Mm. Uh, round two, if they can run around the northern hill, maybe get in front of that. Argentinian team, which uh, if Lycan is properly communicating, they'll know uh, is still in the compound. You know, maybe there's an opportunity to get on the high ground and shut Argentina in boot camp. And uh, by having the high ground, you sort of reverse the fact that they have three men down. Mm. Uh, but realistically, uh, I, I think this, they need to take a fight here for Brazil. I, I think if they can get a, a favorable position now, that's their win. Otherwise, uh, I think Argentina should be able to snowball off this man advantage. And we see now Argentina is making their way up the hill before Brazil can get there. But realistically speaking, uh, I think Algeria should be able to lock down the rest of this team. Yeah, well, it ain't over yet, but there's a chance. There's a chance. They're trying to hold off as well. They have the three-man advantages. No one's um, gone down yet since since that turned to be the case. Yeah, but you see the, yeah. uh, that group now forming up on the northern hill, right? I think that's the... Uh, the wing condition for Argentina. They need to have an mm. impact on this Brazilian group and prevent them from moving. Because, I mean, A, they're not in the circle. B, if they run you know, further along that ridge, they can't get in the circle. If they try and run out in the open here, there's enough Argentinian players shutting down. So they need to find a way to just lock Brazil here. But now it kind of feels like because they've left boot camp, maybe there's an opportunity for Brazil to <laughs> reverse the positions and wrap around yeah. the south. It's um, I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. It's it's once again a situation where there are these opportunities, I should say, for the Argentinian team got to go out and make plays, just like we saw in the first game where they had circles going their way and everything, and mm -hmm. and they, they they failed to hold off. This this is really going to be like their chance to turn things around, as you said. Yeah, and it, it, we said it was the reset map, right? This is the the one map where it plays so differently to the other three. 
that if it happens to favor your gun, you know, your gun style, or if you get that early gunfire that goes your way, which uh, Argentina got, then realistically you're going to be in the uh, the driving seat. Uh, Zoliver's screen off, <laughs> beat, beat the corner and saw him and just didn't shoot. Um, so question mark for that one, but uh, he's alive. It's still a few man advantage, but it, it kind of feels like Argentina is failing to snowball. Right? You know they. They've been trading effectively since they got the three-mile advantage, but they haven't been able to turn it into a four or a five. Yes, they've got the power position that I said was strong. Uh, Oliver's managing to strike it. He's just got two players down for free uh, before finally getting traded. Maybe, maybe the rest can come in. I think actually uh, it should, rest should come in unless the Argentina player moves over. Uh, but, uh, you know, they're still holding on to this man advantage. And now they need these kind of players. They're striking Ooh. still. Lovely from uh, um, Axmeyer, I presume. Uh, to get another uh, two kills, and you know, I said it was stuck on a three-man advantage. Suddenly, there's seven. Suddenly, it's all going in favor of Argentina. That kill feed is looking very white and blue by now. But, oh, don't do that! Don't do that! They're turning things around, but it ain't over till the fat lady sings, and she hasn't sung just yet. It's seven sixteen. The down by double margin. You have to consider this to become a Argentinian win, which would be a very needed one. They were down to zero, so that would um, that could potentially potentially turn the tide. But don't have, as far as I can see, any knocked players right now, which um, leads me to believe that it is still this. Um, um, what do you say? It is still the same position. Nope, nope. It's not even zero. Has gone down. It's um, it's not looking good if you're from Brazil right now. Yeah, I mean, realistically, this uh, you know, you said the fat lady's not singing yet, but uh, she's definitely starting to hum. Uh, <laughs> it's looking really rough. The res can't. Oh no, the res is coming. I thought I thought we were on a perspective there. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Realistically, uh, some of these players now need to do something incredible, and we said how difficult it is to do that. The nation's real. Uh, it kind of feels like now it's uh, prolonging the inevitable. More mm. so. Uh, uh, looking for a, a genuine way to win this, and it looks like we're not going to get that four zero. Uh, which uh, I mean, I said, <laughs> I said after map two, we'd know if it was going to be a four zero or not. It seems I was wrong, uh, but we were right about this being a sort of maybe a turning point because of the way the, the map is different. True. And we saw the, I think the, the power, I think, on Sanok of that early gunfight. I mean, <laughs> we saw a phase one ending because of it on yeah. the previous series. Probably going to see a phase two one here. Uh, once again, the uh, the early man advantage becoming such a snowball effect on this map uh, has, has allowed Argentina to take a low Argentina now to bring it back to 2-1 uh, unless Brutos goes off and he's got two bandages. So realistically, it's not happening. Probably not a lot of uh, going off of that. <laughs> there he goes. That's one more down. Just a few more to go. And this should have our first win today. For a team that starts out by being behind, there's um, I guess there's a, there's a first for everything, unless if Nana and uh, Lycan can get seven kills each, make that. Unless if Lycan can get fifteen kills, then well, this is what, uh, It was earlier Turkey where they started they were in a one v twenty three and they started shooting each other. Yeah, and it went all the way down to a one v eight. There we go. Was there we go. That's one. Does he win these? I highly doubt it. <laughs> yes, yeah, trying. Go. Go. Gotta give Grave a try. Hello. Ooh. Oh, no, we're in, we're in this, that's what she wrote. There we go. He got a kill. Yeah. I don't know if he got. I don't think he actually got the flush. So finally, Argentina gets a map. You know, we, we get to Sanok. We get to the map that is uh, the potential for a reset, and it turns out mm. to be exactly that. The yeah. Big gunfight early on swung it massively in favor of Argentina, and they were able to snowball off that and turn it into a 15 0 win. Really important for them. I'm still a little bit nervous coming into you know the Vikendi and uh, I think it's a wrangle afterwards. Uh, but those two maps should still favor Brazil in terms of the way it plays out. But now Argentina knows they can win. They know they can take those gunfights and win them out. So maybe it's a sign of things to come and then Argentina is going to play a little bit better in their later series. It's... Um, I feel like there were moments in that game where, where Argentina had it. And then I don't want to say they kind of threw it, but they did have a five-person lead. At one point within the uh, the bootcamp area, which then got diminished completely, but then fortunately they were able to, um, I guess you can say, bring it back once more because it was looking to be one of those oh they had it but they lost it type games, but they, they do end up uh, bring it all the way to the end, which I guess is a good thing. 
And I think the important point was that the rest of the Brazilian team couldn't really reinforce because they were stuck on that Western island. Compare mm. that to the, the fact that Argentina was set up around Paradise and on the compound south of Paradise, they quickly ran in and they quickly reinforced the uh, the group that was slowly getting shut down in Paradise. Or in Bucam, rather. And the fact that there was suddenly such an overwhelming Argentinian force meant that Brazil got overwhelmed. They get that amount of advantage and they can snowball from that. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was game and number three. We are headed on over to Bikendi next, as you can see in the list below. So uh, do stick around. We have more matches coming your way. We'll see you again. It's just a As it turns out, Brazil is not immortal after all. Argentina finds their way on the board and uh, maybe, who knows, maybe we're in for a massive comeback here. They find their way to a 1-2 score as we are headed on over to Vikendi. And, uh, well, Saint, what, what played differently in that one since Argentina managed to get away with win? I think it was just their willingness to take the gunfire. I mean, map 1, map 2, they both... Uh, sort of were typified by the fact that Argentina didn't want to take a gunfight as a group. This time we saw them commit to that big gunfight in boot camp, mm. uh, push that man advantage in their favor, and they were just able to effectively trade their way to the win. And uh, I think coming into Vikendi now, you know, they, they'll have a little bit of confidence. And Vikendi is the other question mark map because it's the new map, because teams don't necessarily know the rotation paths and so on. This is the other map that's not necessarily a coin flip, but is a a bit more of an unknown compared to that Irangula Miramar. And really, I think this map, they have to win this, I think, for for Argentina. But they're coming off the perfect, you know, the perfect way to come into a game is winning the previous one. Getting that confidence on their belt. Now 20 players in Argentina having an impact versus just 23 in Brazil. So, uh, you know, it's starting to come together a bit for Argentina. You know, all the mm. players are starting to have more of an impact. Uh, maybe, just maybe there's an opportunity for them to come back in this series. There might just be, there might just be. We're still seeing some pretty um, mentionable names without kills, actually, on um, on both sides. So who knows? Maybe um, maybe this will be the turning point. Maybe the, the power of the cold weather and the trains will be what's needed in order to uh, to get things going. It's, um, I, I'm still waiting for the for the thir 32 people on a train. <laughs> One rotation. day, we'll get it. One day. One day. I mean, uh, it's it's gonna happen next so season. I will go. Obviously, now they've all said and they've watched back Vats and heard my plea. So uh, for, for the next season, <laughs> yeah, for the next seasons, they'll know. They will know to all go do it. Just do it. And uh, well, we'll see if they will or if they won't. Now they have a chance to. We are headed on over to Vikendi. Yeah, straight into the server, which is always nice to see. And it looks like Argentina going to favor this western side of the map. We've seen a lot of circles go southwest of this, you know, towards Pilnek, towards Dinerland. So maybe there's an opportunity here for Argentina to be in the ascendancy early on. But I, I think realistically, um, you're looking at this, and based on what we've seen in the past, the, the, this map sort of plays like a angular Miramar, where you don't necessarily need to be in a power position as long as you're willing to take those big gunfights. Yeah, it's. Um... Do we do we get the Eastern Circle this time around? I'd like one. Is that what's gonna happen? <laughs> I'm we trying to had think one. of a fun fun like what's the best place? I want a brawl. Uh, mm, I want an ending in Abbey, up on where Mount yeah, Tokyo yeah, used to be. Yeah, that makes sense. Or in the There's, castle. Uh, it becomes a bit of a cluster because you have oh, what a surprise because it's other circle. Uh, but the, the castle, the, the, there is that question mark of the fact that you have the bunkers, you know, the uh, basement underneath where. You might get a, a heal off, right? True, true. But it looks like we're going to go to the area where I think every single Vikendi game in Nations Real has been the same place. Yeah. Uh, well, at least phase one, which is down on the southern side. You you sort of expect it's going to come fairly southern, um, either all the way to the coast or to the area sort of to the southeast of Dineland, that hilltop. Uh, it's been the, the typical places that these circles ended. Um, so I'm kind of curious whether... Argentina have been watching other Nations Real games, been seeing how these circles been playing out and can set up for that. 
mm. or whether there's that opportunity where Brazil just come in and just crush it as a big group and, and maybe reverse the fortunes of the early circle. A little disappointed our cameraman hadn't found a way to go through the loop there. <laughs> I was waiting for it to happen, but then no, I guess I guess it was uh, just a teaser after all. Unfortunate, unfortunate. Um, there is um, there there's pressure on the shoulders of um, of Argentina in terms of the fact that, as you were saying as well, if they lose this one, will they be able to go claim yet another win? I mean, I feel like if they lose this. And Brazil goes into Sanok with a 3-1 lead. They will drop 32 people in boot camp. Uh, it's a wrangle next, right? I believe, after this one. Am I right? Oh, you might be right. You might actually... I think it's the wrangle Sanok Miramar. Yeah. Ah, that's how it is. That's how oh, right. No, wrangle Sanok Vikendi, that's it. Because you have no more Miramar coming yes, up. Yes, so yes, 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 yes. So, uh, way, uh, yeah, I, I think coming into a wrangle, Argentina would need to do something special yes. uh, if they do lose this game. And I don't know whether we'll see a 32 drop in one place because then you run the risk of, you know, the circle goes somewhere else, you've got no cars, you add to the blue. Uh, but I expect maybe we'll see a bit more early aggression. You know, they might try mm. and take a gunfight phase one, phase two and try and push them out of advantage and try and almost treat it like a Sanok game. Uh, because, I mean, if the first two maps, that kind of get that play style has worked. Ooh, ooh. I've seen better execution. Hey, I'm kind of wondering if we can stop the <laughs> camera there for a second. Now I am a very, I'm a very experienced roller coaster tycoon player. So we talk about backwards. speed and momentum. If you look down towards the loop again, there is no way. Like look down towards the loop again. There's no way in hell that that wagon gained enough speed to climb over that mountain without needing some sort of like engine, yeah, it needs it needs a boost. Like gravity right? alone yeah. would not gain it enough speed. Maybe it could clear the loop. Maybe it could clear the loop, but there's no way it would have gotten over the other way. Which leads yep. me to believe that it must have been going the other direction, right? It must have been coming. Like our, our cameraman must have done it the wrong way. Uh, no, well, no, because you can see on the, you can see the on the um the one that's hanging at the front. Yeah, that's the tail. Is that the tail? Yeah, it's I a tail. That's the, is it? If that's not a tail, then I don't know what. I mean, the fr the front wagon is. Gone oh yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah. The tail. They're pointing. Uh, so right, our good. our observer was flying in the wrong direction. For God's sake, X. Oh, sorry. I mean, that you it doesn't look particularly safe for loop the loop. Even that's the handle, X. <laughs> Come on, man. You had one job. I'm just doing a loop the loop. It's putting that on the viewers. What is this? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> doing a loop the loop, and the only thing you've got to hold on is a little hand. <laughs> <laughs> as a death trap yeah. I mean you can do it you can do those loops if you if you um, have yeah, no speed yeah I mean you'll stay in the seat and uh, until you get to the top where it slows down and then you just fall out no 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 I mean if you're going fast enough yeah but you I, they're, they're, they're those roller coasters where you start yeah. like vertical or horizontal mm -hmm. and then it gets more and more of an incline you're like just keep going in circles and you keep then you start doing loops and you're not actually tucked into anything you're just kind of sitting in a thingy <laughs> <laughs> Tilted observer, up. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but even then, even starting up there, I'm not sure that will clear the hill. Maybe that's why it stopped where it did stop because it never off. actually made it over the hillside. I wonder how the back fell off. The front didn't. That's that's law question. I want to see how did the back fall off because normally explosions. But normally the front hits something. You know, on a track that gets it dislodged, and then the front goes off. The, you know, the front fell off. But this is the, where it had rolled up, then it started rolling backwards, and then the back fell off. Potentially. I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> I think that's the only explanation, right? Yeah. Which yeah. also goes to prove my theory that there wasn't enough speed for it to get all the way up the hill, because it started rolling backwards again. You should quit your career as a commentator and just go make a roller coaster. <laughs> I, I <laughs> could. It's your calling in life. Yeah. I gotta say, on that note, I feel like theme parks are dying. As a whole, like the the hype, for, it's like with bowling, you know. I mean, Dunaland. Theme parks. Dunaland's past its best, right? Oh yeah, yeah but Dunaland <laughs> is gone. Dunaland is gone. But theme parks in general are kind of kind of doomed. I just don't feel like people do theme parks anymore. With that said, let's uh, let, let's take a look at what's happening here because this has uh, a lot of Brazilian players crashing straight into the kind of ambush of 
Argentinians, and they might not actually have to. They could just push back up towards the north and play safe, but I feel like they're already in too deep. Yeah, now with this circle, I think you're kind of expecting it to go east of Darnland on those hilltops. And now I want to see, I mean, we, I say that, it, it has come north before in the circle. We saw it with Netherlands, Ukraine, where it ended on this crossroad. Um, but realistically, you want to get control of these hilltops. You know, even if it's hmm. the rock ones, use the high ground. Okay. Use the high ground to uh, to get information, to do damage to the other team, you know, maybe pick off a kill or two. Uh, because I, I kind of feel like on Bikini, what you take those positions and you just sit in them. And if you don't have impact from the, you know, the hilltops, the compounds, then you might as well just not be in the server. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're still, you can see, trying to get some info over the hilltops. They will see, or at least LFP1 will see a lot of Argentinian players making their way forward. Will he start shooting? Yes, he will. So they should know that they're running into trouble as well. Nope. <laughs> well, he's definitely running into trouble. Ow. Look, it's uh, pops him in the head. Um, this is bold. This is very bold, but he's going to get two. Can he flush the kills before he goes down? No, he can't. Oh, I thought that was going to be brilliant. Uh, Care for 9SK. It's a very pronounceable name. Almost did something special, but not quite back out. But now another... It kind of feels like Brazil want to go for a crash here. And then Argentina... Are not One nade. Oh, One no. nade. Come on, snaps. Just throw it. One molly. You have you one, one anything. You have a nade and a molly. Throw it! There are so many players down there. <laughs> oh, if only. It would have been five kills. Because there, I think Literally. one got knocked by a, uh, another Argentinian player. Uh, from behind. Uh, that would have been interesting. Um, <laughs> there was a little bit of uh, a little bit nervous there for Argentina, but they, they seem to be able to get away just fine. Brazil couldn't quite punish it because of the control. I mean, with this western hill that is dominated by Argentinian players, that high ground is really important. I blow, he just shots, buddy. There we go. He does get the kill. Eventually, when well, he can get a flush, I'm not sure. Is there was a big Argentinian stack just to the east of him. But they need to start taking control of these hilltops as they're doing. <laughs> you are not long for this world, buddy. Nope. Tries to bag off. Brazil are, uh, are down in numbers, at least in terms of flushed players. You have to keep in mind, guys, out there watching. The, um, the tracker that we have underneath the names is a tracker of... How do you say it? Uh, a flushed player. So if you, you can have like 15 players knocked and we still show that you're 30 alive, when in fact you're only really 15 capable players. Um, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, we see now that uh, Brazil are really quite disjointed. You know, they, they've not really been able to take specific positions and set up around them. Uh, you know, in, in comparison here, where we have Argentina taking control of these hilltops and are shutting down mm -hmm. all, uh, the stragglers, so to speak. Um, Brazil, on the other hand, hasn't really got a, a sort of base of operations. You know, they're, they're just sort of stuck, spread out. Um, and uh, I think that's why now we're seeing Argentina start to shut them down, start to get those uh, those individual kills. And suddenly, 29 v 26, there's an opportunity here for Argentina to take it out of the map, to put it to 2-2, and pretty much reset the series into a, a final best of three. Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. That would be the case. Ganjan finds one, so something is going in favor. Of Brazil, as I said, Lycan finds one more. I feel like I feel like the neck. Uh, I want to call it the neck if the M249 has got to be the like. I don't want. I kind of want to say it's the best weapon in this game mode because the time you spend reloading tends to get you killed when playing this. Mm, but I also feel like the the gun itself is really hard to use right? because of the, it's got ridiculous recoil. Mm. Um, so sometimes I think just having the gun that you're used to. Yes, I mean, you might not get more than two knocks if you're lucky. <laughs> what a shift. Uh, but you know, having the gun you're used to, I think, is a really understated uh, factor in those gunfights because it really allows you to win. This circle has kind of, kind of reset the uh, the game a little bit because yeah. you know, we, uh, Brazil have finally got control of this hilltop where Ganjahan is. And now, all of a sudden, they're kind of locking most of Argentina out on that eastern edge. I feel like this game could come to a close without anyone really reacting to the new circle shift. It feels like the fights that are happening now are just going to be the end of it. But at the same time, it also kind of feels like the it's just a lot of small engagements, which is very different from what we've seen earlier. Yeah, this fight, I think, is the uh, the sort of the pivot that the game rests on. Because right? mm. there's already that four-man advantage for Brazil. If they can't shut down this little, uh, this little block of Argentinian players, if they can't find a way to punish this... 
and the rest of Argentina is allowed to pull up, which is starting to happen now. There's an opportunity here where they just get overwhelmed, where Argentina pushes that man advantage really heavily in their favor. I see there are a lot of players from Argentina very close to one another. Again, one on the hand, Nate. <laughs> and a lot of players would be dying, but it doesn't seem to be the case right now. Yeah, but there's that group on the east from Brazil that can shut down this uh, this northeastern contingent, but it's whether they arrive too late that they can't help out before the hilltop gets overwhelmed. We're starting to see now the kill feed is relatively in favor of Argentina because uh, Brazil's just not set up as a group. You know, it it kind of feels like Argentina's always in 2v1s, 3v1s, and they're just starting to win them all. And that kill feed, there's a bit of a resurgence now. Brazil's stepping back in, getting a couple kills. The, the reinforcements finally arrived, but that six-man advantage is massive for Argentina. Mm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's it's really, really impactful, and you can see they have players further back as well to try and kind of help out. You can see all the flushes coming in now. Again, the leaderboard doesn't tell the full story of exactly how things are looking because not players aren't um, or are counted as players being alive, obviously. So, so um, I mean, the, the vast majority of Argentinian players are up on this hilltop, and you can see there's quite a few Brazilian players still below here. Snaps is one of them who um who needs to deal with the guys above but 7 to 15 they're up against double odds and with every single player gone down for their team they need to find two if not even more players in order to turn this around so let's see is it possible i'm not feeling like it is anymore what do you have one player there can join is live as well there's probably three yeah i want to say three Brazilian places this could be a 2-2 yeah, it kind of felt like Brazil was never able to set up a, a sort of a coherent front line. Mm -hmm. Argentina always had control of those hilltops to be super strong. They got control of those rocks. Yes, Brazil got that crash on the eastern one, but they didn't quite commit the whole team to it. Argentina, uh, you know, flooded it and overwhelmed the players that were there, got that man advantage, and then started to snowball. It kind of almost played out very similarly to Sanok in the fact that we had that one fight where Argentina finally have sort of recognized that they just need to crash stuff. You know, they need to take a 20 versus 10 gunfight. At, at some point, even if it's you know a bit of a difficult crash, they can just start to overwhelm the players. And that's exactly what they've done. That's exactly why they're going to win map two, um, you know, win map four rather, and win their second yeah. of the series. Yeah, we are um, most likely, unless if uh, something absurd happens, then we are headed on in to a wrangle with a tied ball game. DT saw he does have an MK. It's a scary gun. But he's in a 1v13, and I'm feeling like that's going to be enough for him to lose it. Let's see. Yep, there you have it. Brazil falls once more. So what um, was initially looking to be, maybe not a shootout, but a pretty convincing Brazilian win has now become a tight game. Yeah, and uh, once again, I think we said that Senok and Vikendi were the question mark maps. They were the, the, mm. the maps that uh, really were the win condition for Argentina, and they've done exactly that. They've got them both. You know, they've got the two maps that are, uh, I think they had to win mm. to have any chance of coming into this uh, this game and winning the best of seven. But now you come back onto a wrangle, which we saw was so good for Brazil, uh, despite the fact that Argentina had really good control of the circle. It's whether Argentina now, have they learned anything from that initial game, which I kind of feel like they have based on the last two matches, where they've been much more willing to take gunfights. If they take that same mindset now into the wrangle game, we could see a bit of a reversal of fortunes. And maybe an Argentina you know, starting to come back and maybe turn it into like a 4 2. Yeah, that might just be a way for them to turn things around, but that's going to have to wait for a little while because we aren't going to take a break, guys. We are headed on over to Wrangle. Next, you can see the Vetos. Vetos down below. We just finished with Candy, then we headed on over to Wrangle. Sanog as well, and potentially a Miramar game should we go to all seven, but that's going to be a little in the future. We're going to take a short break, guys. Stay around. We'll see you in just a moment. What was a lead for Brazil has now become a tied game as we head into game number five at 2-2 between Brazil and Argentina. Saint, take me through what we've seen here because um, I was, I don't know, I mean, I was convinced that it was one-sided affair until, well, now. 
it kind of feels like we've seen a bit of evolution from Argentina, a bit of a, a change in play style. Because at game one and two, they felt it felt like they were very reluctant to take a gunfight. Uh, you know, they were very reluctant to commit their whole team to that fight when it did happen. Mm. And you know, they were trying to outmaneuver their way to the to the late game. And, and firstly on Sanak, where they took that big gunfight in phase one to get that man advantage, and now once again, where we see them commit their whole team to that rock to to really push a man advantage by by winning something like twenty versus ten on that hill. Um, it feels like there's definitely been a switch that's been flicked uh, in the Argentinian camp that's uh, pushed them to a more aggressive style, a more proactive style that's really helped them out of those two maps. And now, coming into this, I mean, I, I said, I think at the, the start of game three, I didn't see a way Brazil was going to you know, lose this series. Now, I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking maybe it's a 50 50. Yeah, there's um, hope has been sparked in the Argentinian roster and. Um... While the Sanok win was one that I feel could have gone either way, this one was a little more, um, I guess you can say, I don't want to say deserved, that's the wrong word to use, but it was a little more controlled, I would say, from the Argentinian rust. They seemed like they knew what was going on, they seemed like they knew where they wanted to go, and uh, yeah, it was kind of working in their favor. Yeah, the Sanok match was just about whoever won the boot camp fight. Yeah. And because Argentina was better able to reinforce their team, that's why they won it, uh, which, I mean, I mean, strategically, it's really nice for them. But we now go back to a wrangle, which is a match that we saw Brazil take very dominantly first time around. Obviously, we saw the radar tower, uh, which Argentina had control of, and they lost it because of a, a Brazilian crash. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see whether Argentina sort of revert to the bigger map playstyle, or mm -hmm. whether they bring this the the uh, over aggression that they had on Sanok and Vikendi into this map and potentially take it and turn it to three two their favor. Yeah, that's a chance. There's a chance. Let's see. Is it going to be the exact same drop spots that we saw before? It seems like it. No, they switched. Not completely. <laughs> well, it was Brazil last time that had the area around Milta. You know, they had mm. the uh, the southeast side of the circle. This time, it seems like Argentina wanted a little bit. Whether that's a strategy to to try and force an early gunfight, I'm not sure. You know, it might be that they they actually want to go for that fight. But it, realistically, with this plane. There's, there's very few places you can actually go. Because, and I think we, we should really be expecting a millicircle. Northwest. No, it can go anywhere. Yeah, it can, it can go, go anywhere. anywhere. Historically, you do see a millicircle. Like, like now it can actually go anywhere when it's not in, what do you say, in esports mode. I yeah. want a Severny circle off of the start for the memes. <laughs> Just to really screw with everyone. Just like Sarki ending. Give it. Yeah, 10 Let's seconds. go. Full Saki ending. I love the countdown that we get on the clock there as well. <laughs> really, really cool little addition. But yeah, I like it. I, I, I kind of feel like Saki. Oh, oh, hello. It's stupid <laughs> enough. I like it. I, yeah. I can respect that. Yeah, it's Robin always like, haha. That's why I jumped out of the plane that late. So look at that shack inside the circle. On the first Durango match, we were talking about how difficult it is to find vehicles in the southeastern side of the circle. Now. Mm -hmm. Every player on the map, pretty much, bar one or two, is there. So realistically, it's about which teams get the most cars, get into the circle with the most men alive, and, and then it's all about you know cat fighting for those hilltops. And so far, it seems like it's going the way of Brazil. They've got two kills already. They've got an extra knock on Silzen. There's an opportunity here for Brazil to open up the game uh, in their favor. I got to say, I'm starting to wonder whether either of these two teams will actually ever make it to the circle. I feel like Brazil, I mean, they know the vast majority of Argentinian players are down in the farm area. Cut off their road. Like right now, go down to the double barn and just sit there and wait for them to try and drive past on the south, like the shoreline road. You say try and drive past. What cars are Argentina supposed to drive with? I don't think they have any. <laughs> no, well, even better than just sit tight and wait for them because you know they're going to have to come towards you. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's an extent to which you do that, but then you also run the risk of... Uh, if they do just get cars and just drive around you, suddenly you're in such a bad position, right? So I kind of feel like the team that does get a lot of the the vehicles, yeah, we see with Brazil, they've already got that northern group rotating around. You don't mm -hmm. necessarily need to go to the circle per se, but if you set up right on the edge of the circle rather than taking the fight around here, I think it's a... <laughs> what have I just seen? Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, he's just, uh, he's turned me into a squeaker there. Nice one, uh, nice one, Rusty. And uh, oh, that's bad. <laughs> Rebo with two kills. Um, a little bit lucky. 
Uh, but that man advantage we talk about Brazil had, uh, well, it's gone. So <laughs> it is no more. Uh, that's uh, from a player like Rusty as well, who's uh, played at an international level, pretty high level. That's uh, a pretty rookie mistake to make and uh, might have a big impact on the game, especially if Kill Demo goes down now. If you're feeding three kills to Rebo, you know, you know reversing a man advantage, um, that's uh, suboptimal. That's to say the least. Very far from what you want to have happen, that's for sure. I mean, we just had like 10 opportunities to use his first aid. He finally pulls it out. Uh, the guy above, I don't think, has heals. So there's, there's an opportunity that health might be the uh, deciding factor. But the ambush, can he get the kill? Not yet. And the reinforcements now are finally coming in. Rebo's actually got a friend, but there's also the Brazilian players coming in from the north. Rayo and, uh, and Rebo need to start getting a bit more proactive, I think. They need to find this kill upstairs. If they can get that... Oh, there we go. They should get it now. Yeah, there we go. So kill them, it goes down. But now the reinforcement is coming. Can Rebo shut it down? No, he gets headshot. Instantly, Z, uh, 7B gets him down. And a 1B3 now. And a Celeste can come in. F and C. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's a... <laughs> <laughs> that's a rip yeah it was a perfectly placed Molotov fire skill with the double kill and Brazil just about maintains the man advantage but uh, if Rusty could count to five that man advantage would be a lot bigger than it is now you'd have to think so now I mean we saw that, that Brazilian group on the north uh, try and rotate in right? they, you know they drove in and they'd driven in to Pachinki and basically gifted a free path for Argentina to get into the circle and all of a sudden, what well, looked like a circle where maybe Brazil could get the ascendancy by rotating has flipped on its head, giving Argentina the first dibs to the middle of the map. Maybe that's an intentional strategy by Brazil. Uh, we saw in the first it is. And it just uh, Instead of just get a circle, let's just take fight. Uh, but you don't know, I suppose they could do it again. Curious, uh, I think this hill here is going to be quite important. Right? I, th I think uh, even if the circle doesn't necessarily end there, you can use that hill to rotate pretty much anywhere in the circle. And you can use it to see pretty much anywhere in the circle. So mm. just the rest of the Gaka field, or the uh, Ferry field, I think is going to be the, the important position. And given the fact Argentina already has four players there, I, I feel like that's pretty much theirs for the taking. Yeah, I would... Um, I would have to agree with you. I mean, it's... I don't know. It's again. I mean, we had had. I feel like game one and game two things were just so much better controlled than the side of what um, Brazil was doing. Whereas to now they're. I don't want to say they're making mistakes, but they're opening up pathways for the Argentinian teams that they uh, the team that they did not do in the first two games. Yeah, but the one big question mark is that Argentinian uh, force on the the east the outside the circle. If they're stuck there with no vehicles and they can't get in the circle in time, realistically speaking, they're going to lose maybe 10 players to the blue zone. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good way that could happen. I mean, we are seeing a lot of people in vehicles, so uh, shouldn't be all that all that fearful just yet. And they finally got a car as well on these. But now this circle, because there's so many Argentinian players not in the zone yet, Brazil could punish that. They could uh, you know, take out a lot of these players uh, before... You know, there's enough Brazilian players there to support it. Uh, but it kind of feels like it's not being punished for now. Brazil's sort of letting them come into mm. the zone. Uh, it should give Brazil that hill because uh, Argentina had to leave. You know, there's an opportunity for Brazil to get up on this hill, which they're going to do. Um, but it, it kind of feels like now we're going to see a big gunfight, I think, over the uh, the Ferry Hill. Awesome. <laughs> that's going to be right. And rough. boat. That's yeah, the good thing about the boat. You can fit more people in it, you know? I mean, that's... Um... That helps. Now, but here's the big gunfight. Now, this is going to be crucial to decide how this game goes out. And realistically speaking, Brazil has the overwhelming force. They're starting to shut them down. The kill feeds are all in their favor, bar the, uh, the odd knock here or there. And there's just not enough Argentinian players here to really win this fight out. They're starting yeah, to take them either. down. Oh, it's not I looking good. I think the numbers are there. Doesn't seem like it, and don't think it will be. Their numbers are still somewhat even, but as you're saying, 
the, the numbers don't really speak the truth because there are a lot of the Argentinian players like they're, they're still trying to make their way in. Yeah, now there's oh, six or seven Argentinian players knocked on this uh, on this hilltop. So it's gone from a position where uh, it was maybe an opportunity if all of Argentina could get there and control this hill, they'd be in a sick place. But because there's such an overwhelming force by Brazil, they're just shutting down what, what there is of Argentina. As long as they're trading one by one every time, which they're doing pretty successfully so far, then they're going to be in a really good position coming into that late game where that, that group that struggles to get in with those boats, yes, they'll get into the circle, but they'll all be on foot. They'll all be rotating through open fields. And they just can't support the rest of their team. Well, circle doesn't really change much. Not this time around, anyway. I wonder if it's pretty, uh, pretty well sent it up. And as you can see, I mean, there is a big <laughs> chunk of the Argentinian players down south that have had zero impact and probably won't have any impact either. Yeah, but if that northern group can stay alive long enough, maybe the, the southern uh, sort of spec ops force comes behind and flanks. But realistically, with an eight-man advantage already for Brazil, uh, you're looking at it and you're thinking something special has to come out for Argentina. Yes, they have control of that compound, so if there's maybe a lucky shift, they could use that compound to their advantage. But uh, if you're relying on luck to uh, to get you to that late game and to, to win you a game, then realistically, you're not going to do well. Mm, yeah, no, there's, um, that, that, that won't work for you. And I th think without... I mean, we, there's still the final stand possibility for um, for the Argentinian roster, but is it doable? He's gonna shot by his teammate. Are they able to hold off here? I don't know if I should expect so. Now, like trying to uh, sort of through this window, he's making it hard for himself because I'm pretty sure he could actually just vault straight up there. But there, he gets one. Can he get the tr second? He can. He gets two. Ooh. <laughs> The, uh, the quick, the quick and that's the, that, I guess that answers the question about being able to hold off. Is it a third team? They're down by 10. I mean, they're not out just yet, but but it is looking uh, it is looking rather dire for this Argentinian rust. Now, remember, they didn't just bring home two in a row, and we heard an all over to Sanok next, which um, is, I guess you can say, the map that kind of turned things around for them. Yeah, but now it's... Uh... I mean, yes, I think, I think you still have to favor Argentina coming in, Sanok, because they're, they're strategically, and at least in a gunfight, they look better. But, I mean, this match is really typified by the fact that Argentina could never group up. You know, mm. they, were, they were split off and they had the group that couldn't get vehicles on the eastern side. They had the group that got to the north, and then they had the group that went with that boat. I mean, the circle is just hard shifted south, so maybe that, that last little group on the south could do something special, but uh, it's going to be incredibly difficult. Uh, for that six-man group, I think it's actually five men. Yeah, they're all sitting outside honking. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hello, we know you're in there. Javis finds one. This should be GG, and uh, well, not GG because it's not over yet. But at least in terms of um, of this one map in particular, it's uh, again. Delaying the inevitable. At mm -hmm. least that's what it feels like right now. Yeah, but uh, I think now you're just looking at a. Uh, you have to get like car kills. <laughs> I don't know what I just saw in the north, but you have to like blow up a car with four people in, and mm. you know that's the way you uh, you start arresting the uh, the disadvantaged pippers. Uh, found a little cubby hole in the rock. <laughs> but, um, there's only so much hiding you can do before you have to take a gunfight. Now twenty three v four. Yes, you're getting these one-for-ones, but when you when you're down, what 19 kills, a one-for-one -one trade is not good enough. Yeah, no, by no means this should be game over. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Does he not know? He's what? not realized. Uh, RDS, hello. Is he? Is Pippa just switched team? <laughs> what? <laughs> he has got to be massively confused. And now they're all coming for him. Pika is by himself. So, Mr. Pika Pika, can you do a Pika Boo? Or are you gonna just do Pika Hide? What's the uh, what's the player? Pika Die? Is that a is that a Pika option? Die? Is that that's also an option, I guess. And then a Molotov and move on. Do they know right. where he is? Nope, he needs more first aids, obviously. Oh yeah, yes. Use test the uh, the new feature with the uh, the gas can. Go on. Be a big explode a gas can. I love how he's still looting. <laughs> His entire team's dead. He's 21v1 and he's looting. 
Oh. He's just chilling, having a good time, you know. <laughs> Oh, is that, oh, no, he's waiting for someone to come up the stairs, isn't he? Oh, ooh, what's he doing? <laughs> what's he doing? I'm not sure. I, I, mean, I, think, they, I think the planet. Do they actually know where he is, though? That's my big question. I think a big question is do they care? <laughs> yeah, I mean, they should if they want to win the game. Yeah, but there comes a point where, I mean, I think that's going to end in that, that house. At some point, he's going to have to do something. Uh, it kind of feels like he's hoping that he can at least troll someone. You know, when they run up and, and they run onto the gas cannon, maybe he can get a kill that way. Well, um, we're about to find out. They will find him eventually. I mean, they're kind of clearing out the houses one by one. It's just taking a while. I think this might be the longest time we go between getting to the last man alive and finishing the game. Um, I mean, no, I'm no, me and D-Man had one. For the in last season, where one guy was hiding for like a solid five minutes, huh. yeah, that was pretty painful. I mean, it, uh, that was Latam as well. It wasn't this guy. It he's trying hard, bless him. I respect the commitment to the cause of getting a gas can kill, but uh, I find it very hard to believe that it's gonna. Oh, actually, I say that he's got a friend. There might just be a case where it happens. Are they coming in? I, I can't tell from the minimap if he's actually coming in or if he's waiting outside. No, I believe it's just uh, He's nearby, on. though. End our suffering. <laughs> just get up there. Oh, yes. Yeah, you'll hear him. Oh. Wait, no, now that's now he goes downstairs. <laughs> Perfect timing. God damn it. Get back up there. He was so committed, and then he stopped committing. Oh, they're swarming now. He might be able to get a kill with it. Oh, oh yay! 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 <laughs> should I come flesh? And now they all come with their pants. Does he win these? Uh, there's a lot of pants and machetes. That's all I'm seeing. It's like a zombie game. They're watching uh, it's the zombie game mode. Being... <laughs> nope. <laughs> Denies with the, the door shut. Bro! <laughs> no! 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 He ran out of bullets and Young Kosh gets him. There comes Junkush, Argentina <laughs> eliminated as we um, head on over to what could potentially be the final match of the day. That was a fun one, though. I mean, oh, the circles, they were tough, but that's what it is. I mean, when you isolate yourself that early on to one small area of the map, then it's just going to make things that much harder. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's comedic to look back on. But uh, I, I think it was really the fact that Argentina wasn't able to get as a group, you know, because they because they were landed literally on top of each other. They didn't have enough cars. Uh, they mm. lost that. And I think they only actually lost three people to the blue. But it was the fact that they became so delayed in getting to the circle it meant that Brazil could just shut down these little pockets of uh, Argentinian resistance, open up a man advantage. And it, I think it got to the point where something like nine. And at that point, when you have a nine man disadvantage, the other team needs to do something ridiculously stupid to give you even a chance of winning. It's um, it's not easy, that's for sure. It's They, they tried to hold off, I mean, to be fair, as best as they could, but even Alamo. I, I, I'm kind of thinking, did Alamo actually, like the Alamo, did they actually survive or no? I can't recall. I remember the stand and everything, but did they survive? Uh, no, I think they lost, didn't they? The, yeah, I feel like they did. It was a, it was a heroic stand and everything, but... Alamo. Battle. I'm good as well for once. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the the game was the Texans they held against the Mexicans, right? And then they lost eventually. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure they died. I don't quite remember. Watch the John Wayne movie. You guys can find out before me. Um, <laughs> either way, that was uh, game number five. Brazil and now have two set match games to go. First one will be Sanok. If they can't win it there, we're going down to the very final match in uh, which is going to be on Miramar. But guys, we're going to go take a short break. We'll be back again for the next match. And sign up in just a moment.
we're headed on into what could be the final match of the evening. Brazil is ahead 3-2 to two against Argentina, who were down 2-0 and made a comeback. And now they, uh, well, they need to take the next two games in a row if they want to be able to claim their, I guess you could say, championship ring of being the Nations Royale latin champions i'm joined by saint and do we have got uh, potentially potentially two more games coming up could also be all done and dusted after Santa. what are your thoughts we will go to the final maps here well i i think maybe not but it, i the sanok that we just had was a bit of a, a weird one right <laughs> I, I think yeah. that's a bit of an understatement to say a bit of a weird one because uh, what it ended in phase two we had a massive fight in boot camp where uh realistically argentina just uh, I don't want to say got lucky, but the fact that they were more easily able to reinforce boot camp just flat out won them the game. I mm. kind of feel like Brazil's not going to go for that again. You know, they, they might spread out a little bit more instead of going for the boot camp area, or they might commit the whole team. And then it becomes a completely different match where maybe Brazil will be in the advantage. So I'm a little bit yeah. curious. I think phase one is really going to dictate. You know, if Argentina can get that early gunfight, I think we might get to a map seven. If not, I think this is going to go the way of Brazil. Okay, that's fair enough. Well, let's see. We're headed on over immediately. We have Argentinian players jumping out, so they clearly don't really want to take the uh, the battle to boot camp. Or do they? Yeah, or do they? Is that just the way that they're going? I think we're, we're seeing pretty much the same thing from Argentina as they did before, where they had Paradise and boot camp. Brazil tried to go for boot camp as well, but because they had such a big group on the west they weren't able to reinforce and this time are we seeing 32 man brazilian drop on boot camp i think we that's are that's what i was saying that's what i was <laughs> saying that i thought that might be what their um what their strategy would be and i th think that's pretty much what's going to happen is argentina going to back off maybe yeah, it does kind of look like argentina is backing away from this you know heading towards the north and, and giving them boot camp and maybe now that becomes a bit of a bad thing for brazil where they've got to share not that much loot between a lot of players um but uh, at least they probably maybe survive phase one for brazil which is a a bonus <laughs> it's, it's better than they did last time yeah true let's see if the circle is gonna go where they wanted it to i like that the anime i was kind of saying it too that uh that would be the like would be what we'd see them do is that they're just going like be going in like that if yeah. they got the lead, they would commit everything to try and see if they can get the win there. It's a DA circle, but DA aren't in the lobby. So right now it's a Rubinho circle. Uh, as these compounds historically have been uh, pretty much where the circle ends. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of looking at this. I think Brazil might have a slightly easier path into the good positions in this circle. But there's that big caveat to the fact that it's going to be so hard for them to get a lot of loot in that, in that boot camp area. Yeah. And if they're then forced to send a lot of players south to loot that, you know, and and be slower towards the circle because of it there's an opportunity here where maybe Argentina can take all the power positions and lock Brazil out I mean they won the previous game with the pen right don't need loot <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> once, once you have a 20 man advantage you can use pretty much anything to win the game because yeah. there's only so many bullets the other guys have uh, talking of bullets one more for Rebo and he'll be uh, out of the game Alex looking for him Nothing. he's, he's in a rough spot there not exactly in the best situation, though. No. I think that'd be that'd be rude to say. Oh, not quite. Almost right. I think we're just gonna survive for now. Can he? If he can at least get a kill for this, it's not the end of the world. You know, if he can get go one for one, that'd be nice. But uh, he's basically now relying on Alec giving up or on someone else not coming to help out. Let's see, Rebo is very, very, very far behind enemy lines, and he's, uh, well, for now at least, chilling as best as he can. For how much longer he's going to be allowed to, I'm not quite sure, but we'll have to, uh, I guess we'll have to keep our eyes on him, at least for a little while longer. What is to be expected? To, I mean, right now it seems like a chase, where you have a couple of, uh, <laughs> a couple of the players from the, um, the, the Argentinian team okay. just kind of... Yeah. Make a run for it. Yeah, and a lot the of these... Pistol. Imagine if he gets this. No he way. Does. Oh, that. <laughs> oh, is he going to get the flush? He does. He's That's just the first kill. Glock kill I've seen in a very long time. I think that might be the first one I've ever seen. Um, which, given the fact that the gun's been in the game for about two years, 
Yeah. Uh, it says a lot about the fact <laughs> about how bad it is. We've actually got a kill, meanwhile, um, despite the fact that he had about two HP for ages. He got it one kill. It does get traded, uh, which is better than nothing. You know, yeah, getting that one for one trade at least is uh, not too bad. It's 31-30. Um, so there's an opportunity in Argentina can, you know, losing, yes, Rebo is a player you don't want to lose, right? One of the best players on the team. Yeah. Uh, at least he got the one for one and, and prevented that man advantage from going bigger. True. Because you know, we always talk about three, four early on and Sanak being really important because of how early that big gunfight happens. True, true, true. There's a big group of Argentinian players here. Uh, this crossroad compound is a really strong position, I think, to have on this because... It allows you to pretty much cross over the road for free. Now, roads are, uh, I think, the most dangerous place on Sanok, right? Because uh, it's basically this long strip of open land where anyone that's near you, you know, anyone that's near the road can shoot you as you try to cross it. So if you get control of one of these crossroads, you basically give yourself a safe path to different sides of the circle. So I, I want to see Argentina sort of make sure that's reinforced, make sure that's a, a safe place they can rotate through. Mm. Uh, to get to, let's say, the east if it does go that way. Well, I mean, right now at least it's split pretty even. I'm um, unsure as to whether it's going to remain that way. I feel like in 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 situations where one team where you have to push, like where you have to go out and do something, it's always been um, how do you say it? it's always been Argentino has been the team who has been kind of daring to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It kind of feels like that Brazil really want this compound. <laughs> you, you see, they're starting to posture around it, starting to look for those knocks. They, they, I mean, they did get that, uh, one of their own players knocked mm. in the process, but it kind of feels like you want to go for this crash. And this is sort of reminding me of the uh, the, the first map we had in this series, where um, if you treat this sort of like the radar tower, where the uh, the Argentinians were there and didn't reinforce it, uh, this time it actually looks like Argentina is going to drive off and, it, and leave the compound entirely, which I'm not sure I like. No, I mean, there's only so many things you can do. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I guess Argentina is maybe more of a we'll back off and take the fight afterwards, as opposed to what I just said before. It did mean that, um, did mean that in the favor of, uh, of Brazil, not Argentina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you, you're looking at them now, and yes, they back off, and you know, they could take a fight another day, but they lost one of the best positions in this circle. Yeah. I think they're going to lose a player or two. And, you know, there's a couple of Nox players on just to the north of the compound. And actually, it kind of feels like Brazil go for the fight. And we can see the, at least the northern group are just continuing to go there. <laughs> not stopping at the compound. They want the whole circle. I mean, there's no reason not to go for it, I feel like. And the penny drops. The fight is going to happen here. I think this hilltop is going to decide the series. Can Argentina hold on? And it kind of feels like they're just running away more and more. And as these stragglers get picked off, the man advantage will grow for Brazil. If Argentina don't turn around and take the gunfight... It's going to become unassailable at some point. I think they just need to take it him, take an honest fight. Mm. And that's your win condition. If you can win this, realistically, you've won the game. You go into the final game of the series with, you know, with confidence. But it, yeah, if you lose this, it is what it is. I mean, there's a pretty straight on engagement um, in terms of numbers. No one really has the advantage right now when you look at where everyone is. There is a few. A few players from um, um, from Argentina who are kind of caught on these, but as you can see right now, it's all about the brawl in the middle. Yeah, and it kind of feels like so far Brazil have just been on the driving seat. You know, they've got so many knocks. A bit of a resurgency coming in. You know, just the kill people starting to swing back in the favor, but it just feels like Argentina, because they backed off, they got a little bit disjointed. You know, they, they because of the fact that they were all running around in different directions, they didn't quite have a coherent defensive line. Mm. Uh, and now starting to get ripped apart. And now the, the man advantage is nine in favor of Brazil. Make that ten. Mm. And wow. it's a lot more than that because Brazil have just wiped over them. So many players locked up right now. And I think this might be also great for Argentina. They are full on slaughtering right now. To say the very least, they're doing extremely well for themselves. And it looks like we're going to crown a LATAM champion here in Brazil, unless the nine players left of Argentina <laughs> get something special. It's not happening they, yet. I mean, they're on the run, quite literally. Or as I say that, it's actually kind of a chase, but it's three people trying to chase what looks to be 15. 
I'm not sure exactly if um, if that's the situation you want to be finding yourself in. Yeah, this is where we just see the power of that early gunfight, right? I mean, mm. Brazil just decided they wanted to take a fight. Argentina weren't prepared for it and uh, got ripped apart. And now you need players like Silzen to do something special. He's got two. It's a start. I've seen worse. Can he get three? <laughs> that's something. <laughs> Even three, I don't know, could be enough. Well, you need every player now to pretty much get four for one. Yeah. We're getting knocked. Something like that. And realistically, that's just not going to happen. So, <laughs> I, I think we know who's our champion. It's all about... It seems like it. I mean, I don't want to... I don't want to call it over till it's over. But... It might just be over. Every single kill we see going in favor of Brazil now is there to the game ending fast. That Pomet does find one. It's actually quite a few players here. Yeah, exactly. It's a scary player, but they are also absolutely outnumbered. And this is his last first aid. I think Meds is a, a bit of an understated uh, factor in this. Yes, he's getting a lot of these knocks, but now he's starting to get tagged up here. Play behind is going to take him down. There we go. Three players up. Lurkix coming to try and save his teammate, but I mean, where are the other two? You know, like, I, I think this pretty much sums it up, where Argentina are just so disjointed. Mm. Brazil just, they form this blob and it just starts swallowing everything in its path, right? Whereas Argentina, they they back off, they spread out into little contingents and then just get swallowed one by one. And I mean, realistically, now they're going for the pan kill, I think. You know, the normal kill comes in 22 for one. 22 uh, versus one. Where are you hiding? Draft. We know where you are. We can see the map. There he is. All on its own, and that's gonna be it. It wasn't gonna go to the final game, but it was damn close. As Brazil take home not just the game, but the championship of the LATAM Nations Royale Tournament. Once again, final champions will be Brazil in... Um, what I thought was going to be a pretty straightforward game, which then ended up actually becoming a, a rather close one of that. Mm. Yeah, I think after those first two matches, we were sort of expecting this to be a 4-0 a, 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 you know, a pretty much. You know, there, mm. there wasn't really anything we saw from Argentina that was saying they'd come back and they'd win you know, two maps. So they did a really good job to win those, but I think once we got to a wrangle where I think maybe Brazil was more at home uh, with the play style, you know, the momentum goes back in their favour. You know, the, the momentum that Argentina had from those two games they won was all gone. Hmm. And then we come to Sanok and uh, we sort of say Sanok's a bit of a coin flip, right? Because it's all about, you know, you have one big gunfight and whoever wins that gunfight just wins the map. So I say coin flip, it's more about how well you play in that gunfight. But uh, that was why I think coming into this, you couldn't take much from the fact that Argentina had won the previous Sanok because, you know, they just happened to win that gunfight. And I, I don't think there was necessarily any... Uh, yeah, not, I don't want to say skill, that's the wrong word to use, but any strategy involved in that, it just happened. Yeah. And that's now we come into the second Sanok and Brazil basically returned the favour. That's uh, that's how it's going to go. I think we can take a look at the bracket and see exactly how and where that leaves us. Latin finals, of course, just played out now. Brazil, you're victors up there in the, up there in the top of things. So congratulations to Brazil. Um, I, I don't know how to say congratulations in Portuguese, but either way, congratulations, or in Brazilian Portuguese, I should say. Um, congratulations with the uh, championship. It was a hard-fought one. It was a hard-fought one. A well-deserved win, to be fair. I mean, it was... Uh, I feel like we can say, even though even though Argentina had some good moments, it it was a pretty... Um, it, it, it was the, the, the better team that won the tournament. Yeah, it kind of played out how we expected, and we saw beforehand, Brazil had already beaten Argentina. Mm. Uh, coming into this year, they were definitely the favourites. We saw in the first two games the power of Brazil, you know, the, the, the strength in that team. But Argentina, yeah, they put up a really good fight. They did really well to come back to that lowest bracket, to get back to the final after losing to Brazil. And they really showed that they could hang. Uh, you know, they, they couldn't quite hang to the point of winning the series, but those two games where they did win, they looked really good. That is true. Well, guys, as you can see up in... Uh in that corner over there it is now 4 a.m for us but uh, that doesn't mean that there ain't gonna be more PUBG tomorrow because there will be so do make sure to be back at seven o'clock tomorrow where we'll be finishing off the european side of things if you want to tune in for that it's going to be at seven o'clock cestr 1900 
for those of you guys here. Thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in. Congratulations again to Brazil for taking home the championship. And on behalf of um, of Saint and I, have a uh, good night. Some might go to sleep. Some might stay awake. I don't know. But um, on behalf of all of us, have a great evening.